It's episode number 47, I think. Racking them up now, aren't you? <laughs> no, yeah, we are, yeah. It's uh, it's going to be a year in two weeks. Two weeks yeah. tomorrow, 3rd of Feb. That's, that's like quite a lot, really, isn't it? Yeah. It's quite yeah. a lot of episodes. Yeah, 47, yeah. Bloody hell. And so this is um, Tony Dodson part two. Part two. I'm going <laughs> to try my best to divulge as much as I can. Well, you know the amount of people, like, we, we do these podcasts, get different people on all different backgrounds, and we never set an agenda, we never set a time, nothing like that. And yet the amount of people who went, you need to get Tony on and just get him talking again. And I was like, well, I, I, it was, the last time it was, you know, a great chat, and it just naturally, like, it just Close. obviously has to come to an end at some point. But the amount of people who went, fucking get Tony back on and talk again. Do you know what I think it is? I think, I think it's because I'm real. I'm not... And, and that this I've had this conversation with my partner before on the way up here. She was like, "You're too revealing," and that's the problem. <laughs> she went, "I keep my cards close to my chest," and I think that's one of my biggest mistakes mm. in life in general. Is I always think everyone's the same as me. Yeah, no, I, I'm a bit gold. like that. I mean, oh, look, yeah. I'm not blowing my own trumpet, but I've got an art of gold. I'll do anything for anyone, mm. and I just I see the best in people from the start regardless whether they know them or not because I think everyone's got the same models and same foundations as me but unfortunately mate this world's a horrible place and life just isn't like that I remember when I got injured and um, I had certain people around me I'm kind of going to name names but there were certain people around me and I, again I'd, name them come on <laughs> <laughs> but you know I'd, I'd maybe I'd maybe say things that you know obviously my, my recovery was going well and I was doing different opportunities and getting involved in different things and I again, like you've just said, I just assumed people would be happy for me and be like, yeah, because yeah. I'd be buzzing if someone said, oh, Andy, if you rang me and said, oh, Andy, I'm doing this and doing that, I'd be like, is right, toe boss. Yeah, because that's, that's how yeah. we were brought up and but you then, wanted to see the best. And I kind of fell out with a few people because I think as some people then maybe thought, the fuck do you think he is? Yeah. And it's not like I wasn't like gloating on it. It was like, I'm telling you this because I think you're my mate and I want, and yeah, yeah. You should, I'm guessing yeah, you're going to be happy for His me. moral support means something to you because yeah. that's your connection but with like you just said, not everyone has the looks at you the same thing. I know, Be while I was on top and I was doing well, I know people were shaking me and smiling at me thinking, I can't wait till you get knocked out, you knobhead. Mm. And I know they were doing it 100%, because yeah. I'd get it, it'd come back to me and tell me, but you know what it done for me? I just laughed it off and thought, this jealous bastard. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I, 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 think I was so, doing something right if they had that attitude because yeah. I would never yeah, wish that Yeah, that quote, anyone. isn't it? Like, if people hate you, you know, you've done something right or something. I think Winston exactly. Churchill said there's someone like that. Yeah. It's like, you know, you're doing something right when you've got enemies or something. Of course, that's, it's not a perfect world, like I mm. said, and envy is something that a lot of people have got. It's like, like, like you've just said then in terms of if I see a random stranger doing really well for themselves, enjoying life, getting everything given to them or in and it, whatever it may be, I'd be like, well in, lad. Yeah. And I'm genuinely from the bottom of my heart, I think, yeah. well in, I'm made up for you. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not like one of them people that would be like, why isn't that happening to me? Mm. Do you know what I mean? I'm yeah, yeah. totally not that person. I never will be and I don't get people that are like that. <clears throat> what about like envy is in like, um, you know, like Mayweather because he's yeah. quite flashy with... Do you think, does that's that, a gift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a gift. I get it for what it is because of. See, a lot of people, a lot of people who don't um, have never boxed, but think that experts, experts, you know, keyboard warriors, yeah. think they have a right to comment on certain situations. I think just because they watch it on the telly, or might have watched it for twenty years, and they are quite knowledgeable. But unless you've ever done it, you don't understand how hard that is to be, like, like that sort of fighter and have that them reactions, them them qualities in your game, how to read a person, how to control a fight without even having to throw your fists. Mm. I've seen me with a control, <clears throat> a fighter with his legs without throwing a punch. That's a gift. It's not something that can be taught. It's, it, honest, you learn how to fight over time, but there's something in certain fighters that's just a gift. Mm. Like Calzaghi. Calzaghi was gifted. Mm. He was a gifted, gifted fighter, and you know, like I said on the last time I spoke to Joe, and he's a he's a he's a really nice fella. Give me a lot of time, and I could could never understand how he could because he was the same weight as me. Obviously, I'm a big lad to throw as many punches as he did over a twelve round period. I was like, how do you do it, Joe? You know, I go in the gym, I I'm the first one in, I'm the last one out. I'm there for I me. Mean, my day, like I said last time, I was up at six, do me six mile up a mountain, then I'd be in the gym for three hours. <laughs> in Belfast, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> then I'd be in the gym for three hours in a day, and then I'd be back in the night time. And Joe said to me, he said, you know what, Joe? What I don't do in an hour in the gym's not worth doing at all. Mm. 
I'd leave it all in the gym. He said, I'd never, I'd, I'd never like, never dwell on things and how long I need to be in the gym. I got in, I don't want my dad told me to do it, I get out. Mm. And I, again, it's a gift. Some people are gifted with that engine. With that way, that's when it's when people then become like, like you're saying there, like some people are then jealous of that, aren't they? Thinking, oh, well, I you know, don't get I just honest to God, mm. all you jealous people out there eat a fat one because he's just envious, horrible <laughs> people that wreck the world. I want to put the world to rights today. I've got a lot of the things that are. Can like, I just like, say, these are these are the comments. Let, let's see some of the comments. Some of the comments that like YouTube isn't usually the best place to find like um, morale boosting comments, but um, I can take the, the bad ones. When, when, okay. <laughs> no, there's no bad ones. Um, when are we getting Dodson part two? Um, love Tony Dodson, proper now, warrior. Was it three months ago we done this? Yeah. Was it fucking hell? Someone needs to write a story about his life. Mine has lived a life more than many. Great interview. Get Tony on again. Quality podcast. At Dodson talks a Can lot. Can I just say though, everyone that's <laughs> Man, writing these there's things, there's many. everyone that's writing these things, you know what? I know a lot of people say, oh, "I'm thankful." No, I really am. Genuinely, mm-hmm. this this for me is worth its weight in gold. I like knowing that people, if I can help someone, I'm over the moon. But I know. Knowing that people are actually interested, yeah. Because for me, I'm just, just me. I'm, I've never. When I was up there, my feet were still down there, and I'll never change. I never thought I still live in the same place I've always lived all my life. I'll never think I'm better than anybody. Yeah, yeah. And that's, um, and that's quite hard to do for someone who had a lot of success. Mm. I mean, some people just forget themselves, and what people tell them, they believe that 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 they are that person that they're, mm. they're turning into. And, I could never, I could never be that. I, my dad kept my feet on the ground and he was always very stern with me and my mum as well. And, you know, I listened and that's the main thing. I listened and, and, and you know, put the values in early like I am with my kids and I stuck to it. I think dads are a big one for that. Like, my, I've never achieved any of the success like in the kind of limelight in the sport like you did by putting, you know, what, all your life graft into a certain sport. I've never done anything like that. But even like through the speaking, when I was getting kind of bigger speaking gigs and stuff, and I'd, I need to come and watch you speak. By the way, I was going to ask you. Yeah, yeah, we'll sort it out. But I remember like when I'd done the England football team gig, it was probably the biggest kind of profile gig I'd done. And I walked into the pub, and everyone had kind of heard about it, and people were coming up to me. My dad was standing there having a pint. He didn't ask me how it went for about an hour and a half. He said, like he just was just <laughs> talking about other stuff, and then. <laughs> In he's end, not a man of many words, you'd have to be fair. No, he's, he's not anyway, <laughs> yeah. But then even after, he was just like, go on and how does it go? And I think that's good because... He's keeping you grounded. Exactly, yeah. And ke- it's so important. When I was younger, I used to think like... And I kind of found out because like, getting in the Marines was tough and all that and he'd never ever go like... A couple of times when he was pissed, he'd go well done and all that, but I'd think... Fucking hell, he's not does even- he love me? <laughs> yeah, no, literally. Yeah. He's even asked what to do and then... I started doing a bit of work for the fire brigade, doing motivational talks, and um, or, I'd, or I'd, I think I seen a couple of a few times it happened. Then I'd see people you knew out, and people would go, "Fuck now, your dad doesn't shut up about you." But to me, nothing. Say fuck all. Yeah. Do you know what? <laughs> maybe I mean? maybe that's a that's a, a trait that he's got that he didn't even realise he had, mm. but it's worked. It's waiting for me because it sort of makes you want to like do <clears> do better <throat> to get his gratitude oh 100% yeah do you know yeah. what I mean and he's that, like that's my biggest it. critic and my exactly. biggest fan but just I and the know one person the you'll probably fan. listen to more than anybody yeah 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 so that's an important yeah. thing to have with, you, with your dad I mean my dad I can honestly say my dad's never drank he, obviously when he was younger he, he did because he used to work in the, the blue in Garston it used to be a pub in Winder Lane and he used to run in he used to obviously young and other things but f- for as long as I've been alive 40 years this year by the way 40, I feel like committing suicide. <laughs> I'm going to Vegas though. Vegas it is. I've always wanted to go. So anyway, yeah, my dad. Um, the only time I've ever seen him have a drink is when I won the British title. That's it. Really, he yeah. never drank. So he doesn't get it. I mean, he owns a pub, which is a good thing that he doesn't drink. Do you know what I mean? So it's dangerous, isn't it? Better yeah? profits for him. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So he's, yeah, he's, he's um, worked all his life, been a, been a proper, like, like your dad, structure. Mm. You know, what was he like during the family? What was he like to you during the heyday? And honest to God, look, without my dad, I wouldn't have been fighting. Without what he'd done for me, my dad used to um, used to work nights on the taxis, like, and I'm talking six at night till six in the morning. <clears throat> and then when he got home, he'd literally take me to the gym and sleep in the car outside the gym so I could do my strength and conditioning with um, Fitzmaurice on the powerhouse gym that used to be on um, just off Scotty Road. Do you remember it by the police station? No. The police station just off Scotty Road to the left. Yeah, yeah. Used to be a big gym there. That was the other side of town, so it took it took a long time to get there through peak hour traffic. Mm. But my dad had been working all night. He'd be up every day, take me to the gym, 
bringing me back then I'd be back in the gym and, and this is even from the age of like 12 I um, I trained like a professional mm. I didn't I didn't do see because Monday, Wednesday, Friday was gym but I run and went to the gym every day six days a week and that's what I'd done I always went above and beyond and like I said my dad was always one that was pointing out um, if you want to get anywhere in life you have to sacrifice stuff you mm. have to make, you have to be different from the next man Mm. If 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 a lad you're fighting's training four times a week, you need to train six. Mm. You need to be that much better in every every aspect. And my dad weren't a fighter; he's just a worker. Do you know what I mean? But, but he had those values. Though, his values, yeah. his ethics mm. for anything to do with bettering yourself and getting forward in life. He you, was always you need there and implementing. From parents, me. don't you? We had Andy Firth on. He's a pro footballer up at Rangers at the moment, and he was the same. His dad was driving him from uh, Carlisle, wasn't he? Down yeah, and stuff, yeah. and like. Yeah the sacrifice parents make for when sports like yourself sp- going into sports and getting to the high level it is I think the people who do rise like that I've got mega supporters stability yeah. did, he, did he push it because sometimes you see like uh, you know Serena Williams like he, her dad was like over pushy which can just some kids just rebel well, Michael Jackson's just, dad same yeah. sort of thing yeah, yeah, was yeah. very very violent with them pushed yeah. them just I don't know I think it depends on the child as well the individual some people could respond better to that and get the best out of them. I mean, I'm sure I can't name any names or anything that I, that I know specifically about, but I'm sure these kids that are probably committed suicide because of the pressures they were under from the parents. Mm. I think it's knowing the individual, knowing how they respond and react to certain situations mm. to get the best out of them. Because, excuse me, let's have it right. A parent would never want to see the kids go through a struggle or bad. They'd always want the best for them. It's just how, how do you imply that? And... Like you've just said, it's so hard being a parent as a profession, as a sport, blah, blah, blah. But it's so hard being a parent full stop. Yeah, yeah. And I say to people now, look, and take this how you want, people that are watching it. Hey, kids. <laughs> I'm not even messing, right? I did not choose to have kids. Didn't want them. I'm a selfish person. I knew what I wanted in life. I knew I wanted to enjoy me. I wanted to enjoy going out not having responsibilities and not having mm. I didn't so technically I was raped twice that's why my kids are here <laughs> do you know what I mean I didn't <laughs> no look again take this how you want to take it right I love my kids I love them when I say I hate them I don't I'm not <laughs> like that do you know what I mean I won't clip this out and send but no you can no you can no you can look, look this is what I'm saying because of the structure my parents put in with me, I pass that on to my kids. I do everything above and beyond for my kids. I love them to bits. They're looked after. They don't want for nothing. I teach them values. I always say to my little girl, she's just turned seven last week, what the man has cost, man has cost nothing, Dad. That's how my, I want my kids to be brought up. The same models and the same structure as I did. Now, wouldn't change them for the world. Yeah, yeah. My kids, I love them to bits, but I didn't want them. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And and I tell them this, I speak to them because I don't want them to make the mistakes I made. Now, like I said, even though I the the two of them were, were a mistake, I would never change them for the world. Do you mm. know what I mean? When I'm older, they're gonna look after me. I love them to bits, but yeah, it's yeah. it's just I, it's I just think, so it's, hard. It's so refreshing to hear you be honest and say that because I think if a lot of people do you, do you want to say it, I'd but say they're scared to say it. Not so much, kind of. <laughs> maybe say like you said it maybe but I think people would be on I, I think people yeah for me not the same as yours but when I got told I couldn't have kids I'd be like I, get it I've had the snip so I'm sound now it's cool so that's all essentially done. was for me it was like look done. essentially I had the snip essentially at, at 20 and then when I it was like I can't have them so I, because if someone told me I couldn't have it I, I kind of wanted it and, no that's and human kind of nature the, taking over there when you're not supposed to do something like you're a naughty kid yeah, when you, you just don't wanna, do it yeah. you want to do it mm. and like I say and then I had I, um two step got in the relationship and had two stepchildren ends up having going through IVF and having Alba having Alba meet me, the miracle it's amazing to have her and obviously no regrets again absolutely go over the moon but what I think looking back at when I was early 20s and stuff and, and then your irons you're having had the life you think you're yeah, growing up and you're you haven't. think that maybe yeah but I think now 31 I'm a I think people people want to settle down and be grown up and have that family too far soon. too early. Too soon. Far too early. Like I, if, if I think if everyone's different, obviously, but I, I think you shouldn't really want to be settling down and having kids till your late 30s, yeah, maybe 30, mid, mid 30, to late yeah. 30s. I'd but the only problem with that is depending on your lifestyle, what you're going to be like going to the school with your kids, you want to be able to enjoy your kids. Yes, yeah, you know I mean? yeah, suppose mm. there's that argument as well, yeah. I mean, look, and, and one of the downsides to me with my kids as well was I literally brought them up 
was single-handedly, do you know what I mean? Mm. Constantly with me, my lad, I've had him since day one. Mm. He's lived with me since day one. You know what I mean? I my little that, girl. that was one thing that stuck out for me last time. I didn't realise that. I think you, you hear so much about single mums and single... Like, you've, you don't hear single dads having the kid 24-7, do I've you? I've had my son, my son since he was 18 months old, something like that, too. I mean, even before that, it was just me and him most of the time because of the situation with his... You know, I, I see it's half me not even to speak. I don't want to speak about them because yeah. they're not they're not important. No, no, and I don't want you to. But it's hard, I mean, it's hard just, just as a parent, I think it's I, an I, amazing I want people thing. to understand how hard it was for me, though. Mm. Like literally, I'm not messing. It was literally just me bringing them up. Do you know what I mean? So it was it was so so hard. I like this is where people are gonna say, "Well, we did, didn't you?" Just say you ate them. I, I think because I was so young. How old was you when? when you Twenty-two f- when Anthony was born. Yeah. I think because I was so young, I was 30 when Lou was born. I think I was... Th- no, no, 33. 33 I was. Or just before I turned 33, 32. So I think because I didn't want them to start with, and then they just happened, I think I sort of had a little bit of resentment because I didn't want them. Mm. I think that's where they come from. But deep down, you know, they my kids. I wouldn't, I would, like I said, I wouldn't change them for the world, but I just found, found it. I think because I found it so hard doing it alone. Mm. Don't know I mean. Listen, I was... I had Anthony was the Antichrist. I think I said this last time. <laughs> I think you did. You're not messing. And look, people don't get it. Do you think, oh, no, we must be messing. 10, 15 times a night, <clears throat> vomiting, bad reflux. I had to be up and get him, take him to my mars to watch him for me. And like I said, it, it, it was just to do that till he was five by myself mm. without my mum. I'd probably end up putting my head through a wall or something. Do you know what I mean? It was that hard. And it, Children are just so challenging. Yeah. At 22 then, what what stage of, of your career were you in then? I was British champion when I turned 23. When, when you turned 23, yeah, right? Yeah, well, uh, two, yeah, okay, so I turned 23 in July, I won a British title in November. Right. Yeah, uh, 2003, yeah. Bloody hell. That's yeah. Mac. Yeah. Listen, I've, I've got Albert, I have a 50-50, I'm not with a mum, sadly no more, so I have a 50-50. Mate, that's fucking hard, you know, just <laughs> like fucking 50. No, look. Three, like, I have a four times a week, one week, and then three times a week the next week. And I was, I feel like I have the best of both worlds because where you're saying there, it's I, I can kind of I get all my shit done, and then when it's me and Alba, it's just me and Alba. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, yeah, yeah. like I showed you my tattoo there. It's um, family above all in Latin. Like I'm dead lucky because like the other week I had to have Alus here. Anthony lives with me anyway, but I had to have Alus here for like seven weeks. It was still a new one I before. Yeah, yeah. I had to have it for seven weeks for whatever reason. Um, and again, without my family to just to help me on certain days when I'm not mm. working, you know, I don't know what I'd do without them. Family is so important to you, mm. honestly, and, and like more so with us, with our mums. Mm. People, people need to just understand that life is so fickle, mm. and until I have real people around you and people are really care for you and genuinely, genuinely, not none of this lying bullshit that people have. Like lie to your face and then talk about it behind your back. People that really care about it. I'm dead lucky to be surrounded by a lot of people. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot of people that fucking probably hate me as well, but I've the close ones to me that are there to me to support me and that because I've I've been through fucking hell. Mm. I swear to God. I wish I could talk about everything. I really do. One, I won't because it'll make me look like a fucking divvy. Because I put up with it. And two, because they don't deserve the time and the things that have happened don't deserve to be spoken about because bottom line, it's embarrassing for me. <laughs> it's not happening, but again, it's led to where I am now. I'm a better person for it. I've come out the other side and I've, I've genuinely, for the first time all my life, I'm 39, I genuinely think I've learned from mistakes. Mm. Whereas I've made the same mistakes over and over again throughout life, thinking again, like we said before, that everyone's got an art and uh, as good as yours. Mm. I've, I've made that mistake. I always think that. Always trying to see the best. Yeah, people, always. Yeah. And uh, you shouldn't. It's mm. just not like that. Mm. You need to take a step back sometimes and just think yeah. and assess it. Go away I from think it. that definitely comes with age and experience. Like, me, you say that, right? But like, my partner now, she's quite young and. Like if, if we have a disagreement, she'll just she'll just take herself out of the situation, sleep on it, think about it, and then talk about it the next day. Whereas me, I'm like a fucking banshee. I'm just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, just, I can't help it. And like yesterday, I uh, tell you an instance. Yesterday, I uh, at me. So I've just took my son today to weigh in for um, for the championships. I think it's the NBC's. 
he's, he's they called something else now, but it was the NABCs when I done it. So he's he's really struggled because he's dropped down a weight. So as a fighter, like I said to you last time, the hardest part about fighting is making weight. You, you love training as a fighter. You love training. You yourself love going in the gym. Love feeling healthy. It, it releases endorphins. Like the feel good factor. So the training's not a problem with him. He's dedicated that way. He's been eating a lot less but clean to make the weight because he's had to drop an extra kilo and a half, which is for a skinny kid, it's a lot. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's it, it'd be it, it's really difficult for him. So he's very temperamental. My son, he's 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 like he's like me in a lot of ways. He's very touchy. Um. So <laughs> goes in yesterday. He's like look, Dad, look. It's like what son? <laughs> look at them on my face. Look at them. He's got two little fucking spots on his face. And you'd swear it was the end of the world. <laughs> right. And he's gonna he's gonna kill me for saying this, right? He's got he's like he was really close to my mum. And obviously we live in my mum's house now. Um so he stripped off, put my mum's pink house coat on. It smells of my mum. So he put my mum's pink house house coat on, jumped in bed, pulled the cover over his head, said, I'm not I'm not fucking fighting. I'm not having it, I'm not doing this no more. I was oh, I'm always hungry, I can't be asked. Look at the spots on my face. I said, son, listen, I'm downstairs. I'm not gonna talk to you now. When you've calmed down, come and talk to me. <laughs> and I walked away because because of the way I used to be as fighting. Like were you, John, were you John like Rice. That? Were you like that? No. No. For the reason why my dad would take his slipper off and absolutely pummel me with it. If I backed, if I spoke to my dad like that, he'd take the belt or the slipper and I would get up, no matter how old I was, I'd get obliterated by him. Also, John Rice, he's not tactful at all. He'd be like, John, he'd go, so fucking what? Shut up, you dickhead, and get in the gym. Or shut up, you divvy, and get on the scales. There's no, like nowadays, I think the kids nowadays are very fragile. I think they're like, um, I think because of social media, comparing themselves with everyone, they're very touchy, and any little thing gets to them, and their heads just fall off for whatever reason. And like that's what he was like yesterday. So what I done is a text John, because obviously it was my turn as well. John, John Rice, yeah. Mm. Text said, "Listen, bro, he went all right. I'll try and ring him." So Anthony heard me turned his fucking phone off, didn't he? Switched his phone off. So I said, "Anthony, John's ring." He said, "Don't care. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not fighting." And I'm, I'm uh, I said, "Listen, son, I promise you. You know if you don't, because he if he would have vetted, he felt better for five minutes and then be gutted that yeah, he'd done." Yeah. I said, "If you do that, son, tomorrow you're gonna feel worse than what you feel like now because all that hard work and dedication that you put in, because he proper committed himself to drop this extra weight. He's been running every day, training every night, like like I did." So he, he's really, really gone above and beyond because um, he wants to make a point and, 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 and win the championships. I said, tomorrow, if you don't, you'll regret it even more. And I know how, how temperamental he is with his, with his feelings and he's very touchy and I know it'll just it'll, it'll push him over the edge. And it, it worries me because you don't know what these kids are going to do. I mean, I'd like to think that he'd never hurt himself, but every, anyone, you, you know, mm. you read things in the news and you think, wow, mm, how, gotcha, how have yeah. they done that? So I don't want to ever, ever... Something like that. I'm not saying that he would, but as a parent, yeah, you, just got you, you worries, think worse, yeah. don't you? You worry. So anyway, so I, I rung the, um, one of my mates, Eddie Skeggs, is saying at Gemini, and me and Eddie, we go back. We were in crash together. That's mm. how far back my little family mates are. Like I've, I'm close. I'm I'm just as close to him as I am my own brother. That's how close we are. Um, so I rung him. He said, "Look, I'll be around in a minute." So straight away, drop whatever he was doing, come to my house. Went upstairs, had a talk to him. And then 10 minutes later, Andy comes downstairs and starts speaking to me. Do you think I'll be all right? Dad? I was like, son, look, let me tell you, the only reason why you feel this bad now is because you're dying and you're depriving your body of water, fluid, food, nutrition, goodness. You're pushing it to the edge every day. I said, I promise you, after you've weighed in tomorrow, you'll be flying. He went, yeah, yeah. Eddie said I can just go and stay. Because I was in work last night, so he would have been in the house by himself. When he's by himself, his head falls off. He starts mm. he starts going through pictures of my mum, watching videos, and it just gets him down. Mm. It does, because yeah. like I said, because um, it used to be him and my mum. Yeah. used to be there, so it reminds him. My mum, he struggled really bad. I feel, bless him, I feel so sorry. How old him, is he? 17. But like, yeah. a, like from a young age, because he was with me when I was in Ireland training and that, or going away training, he was always with my mum. Mm. So that was his mum. Yeah. So she was a big it's part of his life. Like it is. Life. And he's like I said, he's very, he's very hormonal anyway. He's like a, mm. an emotional wreck. 
So but you can fight, I'll tell you that for not. So um so I said, Look son, this is why you're feeling this way, and I promise and it's hard for him to 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 listen to me as his dad, even though I've got a vast experience in the fight game and what I've done amateur and pro. Did we ever listen to our parents? I know what yeah. you did when you got bigger, but as kids growing up, you just tend to not listen to your parents. It's, yeah, no what. it's like that thing even in schools, like when if if a teacher's telling you something every day, and then I go in as a motivational speaker and I say the exact same message the teachers have been saying. Yeah, do you understand? To me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what happens. It's got it. So I, so Eddie done that with him. So um, he said to me, he said, "Do you mind if we go instead?" I said, "Son, don't want you being here by yourself. So go to Eddie's. Eddie had a running machine in his house and all that. So he stayed in Eddie's last night. I picked him up this morning. He's on the weight. Took him away and. So the Solly, because I boxed, I finished my career with the Solly because John Rice left Gemini, so I moved to the Solly. I won my last amateur title, junior ABA for the Solly. Probably one of the best performances in my whole career. So these pictures of me all on the wall and all that, I could see him when I went in today and he's looking at this, this, you dad, this, you, he was proud. Boss, yeah. me, England, me England vests are on the wall and stuff, do you know what I mean? So it was boss. So I showed him a picture, there's a picture of me with my arms up like that winning the junior ABA title. I went, how old do you think I am there? He went, 20. I said, I'll turn pro when I was 18. I was 18 on that picture. He was like, really? Like, I said, lad, it's just, you know, you dedicate your life and get rid of these emotions, what, like letting your head fall off and your emotions overtake. you like, your day, wrecking your day for you. If you can learn to control that, like mate, you'll have that success because you've got the abilities, you've got all the abilities. He's, I can honestly say, not just because he's my kid, technically, he was a better fighter than I was. I just had immense power for the kid. But he, he will grow into that as he matures. So I'm just trying to keep him on the right track for it. I'm trying to keep him... not Because what I wanted to do, what I normally do, is when he started doing that in the, in his, in the bed with the pink house coat on, I felt like saying, you little fucking divvy, get up now, fucking get out, go and do... That was my... Because my what, dad was what, what like that with me. What do you think made you then not go down the same route as your dad then? Because... Because it obviously worked for you, though. It, was successful. it did. Well, that so. would, it worked for me, but because I know he's so emotional, and okay. I know because I've done it in the past when he's been a bit younger, and he's just broke down mm. and like started saying silly things to me, and, and like, it's worrying. So obviously, I knew that tact doesn't work with him no more. So that's why I said to him, "Son, listen, I'm downstairs. You want to talk to me? Mm. I'm here. Do you know what I mean?" I know. And what type of parent are you when it comes to like we saying before about the Serena Williams kind of father figure to someone who's bit? Where would you say you are on that scale? You're kind of like. You having to kind of like, See, come on, it, get in the gym every day, no. or are you like, you know what, lad, it's down to you. I, I leave it to John, right? And um, like Anthony says to me now, come to the gym with me. I honestly don't want him, and he doesn't get it. I'm sick to death of boxing. I'm sick of it. If I had my way, he wouldn't fight. I have this conversation with him every day. I had one of my other mates, Chingy, saying to me, um, "You still listen, so you need to stop talking to him like that." I was like, what? He said, well, you know, Yingy goes to the gym with his kids because his kid's a bit young and he sits there and he watches, hasn't he? Um, spa. And he says, so he's, he's, he's frightening how good he is. You need to like... I said, but I do back him. But what I don't do is make out like it's all rainbows and sunshine. Mm. I tell him about what he's got to sacrifice and how much me personally, I don't think it's worth sacrificing for what you get in return. I just want him to have a backup plan. I want him to not put all his eggs into one basket like I did. It worked out for me, but for 19 million people, it hasn't. Do you know what I mean? It's such mm. a hard game to, to earn a living from. I just want him to have a backup plan. Do you think plan. you're maybe talking too much of the negatives to him? That's rather what Yingy said to me. Yingy said to me, he said, look, don't put a damper on it. What will be, will be. If he chooses that, you've just got to support him and try and butter it up so he's got a good feeling about it so mm. he gets the best out of himself and he's right I did I took that on board because you know even though I'm, I'm a little bit stubborn if it's something that'll benefit me or benefit me kids for the future I'll always listen to it I need to um, I guess it's hard though if like because again I come away from our chat last time I didn't know a lot of the boxing history that, that, that you've had but I come away from that thinking fucking hell he's like not unlucky because you've had a load of success, but I felt like saying it was like fucking hell, like it. I am. Um, I was. Yeah. <laughs> you couldn't get no yeah. closer. So I come away thinking like, like, and so I can totally understand where you're not like bitter, but a bit like it's not fucking all as it seems, and, and I can understand how that can come across to your son, which, like you say, in hindsight, isn't is it the better? I don't know. See, do you know one, what I mean? One, I had this conversation with with Eddie on the way to the weigh-in before. He was like, "Tell imagine you were born ten years later." 
or even six years later mm. with the with the prospect of social media um like advertising yourself interacting with people because I know it's big fights mate you'd be fucking hilarious I know Frotch Smith when we, if we'd have had social media back then it would have been unreal it would have I, been I unreal. would have sold it because if you're look people like to think like we said this I said this last time people want the best to fight the best and, and that's how it should be and, but it's not no. if you sell tickets and you make money for them promoters mate you're getting looked after oh, yeah. do you fucking drag in Juan Pablo Escobar <laughs> from from do you, somewhere that's never been stopped in 40 fights and, and powdered it up like you're fighting a, an absolute killer when really he's a shithead that is terrible but looks good on paper well, that's well, and to get you the world title <laughs> do you know what I mean that's the way it is though that's all yeah, about yeah. the McGregor Mayweather too aren't they like, if, if it makes money it makes sense that's what it's I mean like last time. it's just everything is can I just say that just, I just see El Chapo's a big fan there on there <laughs> 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 the podcast him. lad stumbled across it by accident oh nice that was a good accident then El Chapo <laughs> nice one mate <laughs> he's locked up now isn't you know he so what, he's got though, a bit of time yeah. you know I, I'd not I don't I'd not seen these comments, but these are these are amazing. Well, let's to see. go but around the, them. The amount of like just direct messages I got on text are, are, are always great. I didn't realise there was this many as well. I think a lot of people because I never had social media back then. A lot of people don't actually know me as a person mm. and don't um, maybe don't know that how, how like how high and how close I, I literally got to go into the big times. You know what yeah. I mean? I was literally borderline. When you think about like Paul went on to get. F- four wheel title shots after me Frotch went on to go on the final got beat by Ward Paul's last six, four four wheel wheel title titles. fight wasn't even that longer was it as well no, no. I, listen I, if I wouldn't have gotten a fire service I would have still been fighting guarantee because I know now I could still go in the gym now and do what I'd done then just before just before I retired I was going to fight fra- fra- Frank Buglioni for the British title and hey Bell you undercard too do you know what I mean and I got it in the car and got compression damage in my wrist that was the only reason why I couldn't take part in that I was there but it wasn't... Now, one thing my dad always said to me, this is at the start, he said, son, made up your fighting, right? You're talented, you're going to go a long way. He said, but you know when the day comes, mate, when I tell you enough, you've got to promise me that you'll stop. And that was the way it was. Me and my dad had a conversation about it. He said, so, he said no, I don't doubt that you, you, you couldn't still do it. But you've had 42 professional fights, you can speak correctly, you've got something about you. You're not punch drunk. I mean, I knew Alan Rudkin and I've met a lot of fighters. It's sad, isn't it, when you have met a couple and you're like... like the punchy and mm. it's long. It's like... I don't want to be disrespectful towards anything, but you should know or you should have people around you that should say, look, lad, enough's mm. enough. I mean, there's a few fighters now that you've probably seen me on Twitter saying, look, you need to stop now. You know, they always think these are fella. Oh, what was his name? Got in a little bit of a conversation with him. He was fighting when I was like 14 or something, 14, 15. Um, I think he was a lightweight. He boxed Spencer Oliver, decent fighter. I've just seen on the poster he's fighting again. And I, 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 met, I said to the lad, I said, he must be at least 50 now or something. He said, oh, he just wants, wants one more go under the lights. And I'm thinking, that one fight could do could, the damage yeah, yeah, to you, yeah. mate. It only takes one punch. I, I always think as well, I always think when you know you look at someone in the slurred speech and they're not maybe you know talking properly and then you think you look back at, at their high you know under the lights you know 10 15 20 000 people screaming the name and then you fast forward and you look at them when no one gives a fuck and they're like imagine how these young lads get drunk on the success and believe the hype believe that everyone loves them and Literally, you know, when you not when you're not winning, you're no one. No one gives a flying fuck about mm. it. That's reality. Everyone loves a winner. Mm. I think I've just been dead lucky in a sense where, because I've been a genuine, straight up person, people have talked to me, and I've always made the effort to keep a connection with with people that I've I've, I've come across across the years, no matter how high or low that my success was. Nah, I, I can mm. vouch for that. I mean, when you were at the fucking like when you were up for the fight of the year mate yeah. and like fucking every that should have got fight of the year by the way because Froch and uh, Pascal mm. was a world title fight but it was only me and him that got nominated for it mm. and obviously that was a belt of fight anyway but they should have been domestic in a world but I think that shows a lot though the fact that you're up there and then you still fucking made so much time for me and from then that's how we became I've, friends and yeah. I think that says a lot about people mm. that when 
Same, same. Like I just think people who, people who can just give time beyond. Like we had Eunice on last week. That's how I met her. I spoke to her on Twitter. That's my for, uh, my godson's um, cousin. My is godson's it? Just I've only met him once or twice. She used to go to the Thai bar. Her, um, her auntie used to run a Thai bar pub and mm. um, up in Heighton. <sighs> Yeah, Thai bar up and I used to own that, and she used to come in they, when she was on the gladys and she was dead, she was dead nice. She was all right. Mm. Carrig, Carrig was the same when I first met him in 2009. The pool nearly winning the league, and yet he's sitting in my house, fucking just such genuine, no matter how high or low you are, just you know, mm. being. And see, I think see, that goes a fucking long, think, long way. I think like Robbie Fowler follows me on Twitter, and Robbie's an all I've been, we've been for a pint with him. He's another thing, good no, guy. Like, like our generation, them, they were gods, mate, in this city. Yeah. Gods on a different level. Like I genuinely think. I mean, I've never met Cara, but I reckon I'd be a little bit starstruck by him. But I know yeah. he's dead down to earth and a dead sound lad, and yeah. loads of people so are friends. He's probably friend, one of the funniest I mean? fellas. He's dead fucking quick, you know. He's dead funny. He's like. one of us, lad. That's what yeah. it is. He's been brought up with the same, the same sort of background that we have, and the same scouts. <laughs> People don't get it, you know. You go out of the city, some people just don't get the scouts. I'll tell you a funny story. How quick he is. <laughs> we, were in, we were in the gym. He probably only remember. He's just a little one liner he said, which had me fucking crying. Um, it's just fucking ages ago, but it just sticks with me. One of the fellas in the gym said, uh, "Oh, Andy, I used to, used to be a fella in here or something. He, um, dead good soldier, and apparently he wanted to go for the SAS or something. But um, his map reading was awful or something. And I went, oh yeah, you know, in the SAS, you, you know, your map reading needs to be shit hot, like." He said, yeah, yeah, he was fit as fuck. He was dead good and all that from what I believe, but he was just always fell short of being in the SAS. And I went, oh, right, what does he do now? He went, fucking believe it or not, Andy. He, and by the way, this is in like the change room. We're all just getting fucking getting dressed on that. And Cara's just sitting there minding his own business while me and this old fella are talking. And I said, oh, why? What's, what's he end up doing now? I said, believe it or not, he ends up in the, in like the kind of Colombian Foreign Legion or something. He's working <laughs> overseas doing something mad like that. How? I, I was like, fucking hell, how did he end up there? And Carragher went, he got fucking lost. <laughs> 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 just got a job while he got lost. Oh, oh, just insane, he's awful at like, map reading. Uh, like, you don't lost. even think he's listening to it, he's just it sitting is, there taking it in. Yeah, he's one of them, he's dead funny. <laughs> yeah, imagine being in that team and like around that time when they had all that success in Istanbul and stuff and Carragher obviously one of the best defenders in the world at that time. The banter and yeah. the, the laughs and oh, just unreal. The, the footballers don't realise how good they've got it. Yeah, but I I think though it comes back to I think having and I know I know Karistav Philly's a top top fella as well and I think it's down to that foundation keep, keeping yeah keeping yourself grounded and stuff and mm. and I seen I had a quote the other day on a podcast I was listening to and it said uh, show me your friends I'll show you your future and it's it's the people you yeah. surround yourself oh with, mate you know what I I'm not one for quotes and all that but when when I see quotes of what you've just said it's spot on mate mm. you become like the people you surround yourself with. So like for me, like my little firm of mates, all of them are fighters. We all done it together. None of them touched drugs. None of them drank. I mean, don't get me wrong. Every now and then we'd get in the street corner, get a bottle of Mary down cider or a can of Elden Brow and got pissed. Yeah. yeah. But we, we, it was, we were scared of our parents. Well, it's not so much fear, it's respect. Yeah. You had your respect for your parents and you wouldn't cross that line and do do the next step do you know what I mean or anything like that we were always grounded like like you said before you're always grounded because of your parents which is a good thing and um, I t- I'm trying to do that with my kids now mm. I mean I, I feel I feel like even though like you said you admire me for being like a, such a, like a stand up parent and like you don't really hear many like single single dads uh, I feel like I've failed my kids in a way because I haven't given them what I had I wanted my kids to have that stable family. Do I know, you, know what you mean? mean everyone. May I, I? May I feel guilty sometimes? Mate, That's what I'm saying. I do. It's, it's shit. You know, if it really hated me, kids, like I said, I wouldn't feel guilty, but I yeah. do feel guilty. May I feel I as a responsibility as a parent, you should give your kids that. Mm. And I know it's not been down to me. It's down to the other two rats. So it's not been down to I, me. I do think, I mean? mate, it's. Mate, yeah. So on the flip side of that then so it, it is because of me I, I chose again to, I shouldn't use that word but I, I can't help it I'm well, I, I chose it. to kind of walk away from um, thankfully we're good friends now and we, we get on great enough but it was kind of me that ended the relationship and mate there's times I feel guilty when I mean thankfully we are friends and we can do stuff together but but I, I feel shit though even though I'm giving Albert a good life and I know my mum's giving her a good life and we do do stuff now and again like Christmas we went panto together as a family and stuff and it was cool but 
I think it's a parent thing. If you are a single parent, you do feel guilty that oh, fucking hell, it should have worked out, or I shouldn't have brought these into the world if I knew it wasn't going to work out. But you, I was raped. But I told you him. can't. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. Um, I don't think you can beat yourself up too much about that. Cause I, I feel gutted about it sometimes, and that. But what can you do? Do you know what no, I mean? Not at all. But you've got to make the, the the most out of what you've got. I think. I, you know what? I don't think I'm doing too bad. My kids are happy. They've got clothes I, I on think the that back. Was, again, one of the most water. astonishing things from last time was how how you had that career. With obviously you had the help of your mum to help, but I think that's. I don't, I don't See, know, another just, thing is, well, like, you, you don't, don't there's not many boxes. Like I don't think who reached the kind of you know the levels that you did. That was and that was while I was taking sleeping tablets as well. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm. shit, yeah. Like I went and like people that are close to me know how bad I was bad. Like, so I'm so I'm so happy now that I'm past that and looking back on it, I played Russian roulette with my life, like. I, I can't emphasise it. It's like I'm trying to find the words to, under, to for people to understand just how severe it got. It got to the point where because of the knock-on effect what I was having with my personal life, I was, I was you know the way some people, some people will go out and party, some people will go for a walk or go to the gym or whatever. My, the only way I could get out of my head was to blank it out with the sleeping tablets. So I couldn't remember. So I could one because I re- re- obviously you require sleep to train. Yeah, I was training three times a day. Could you just not shut your mind off then? Mate, I'd look. I'd go to the gym. So I'd come back from the gym. So my I told you my day was the run in the morning up Cable. The three hours in the gym in the afternoon between eleven and two. Excuse me, and then night time I do my strength and conditioning where I'd be like weights and then I'd do sixty lengths excuse me, in the pool. So, after the pool, after the thing, I'd get a sauna and I'd be like, oh, can't wait to go to bed. I'm absolutely goosed. I'm going to sleep boss tonight. And then, my mental side of it would be, no, you're not. You're not going to fucking sleep. You dickhead. <laughs> like, it's weird. You'd have an argument with yourself. Your body felt exhausted. I mean, you wouldn't after three sessions a day. Like these are sessions as well. Like you, like you, you ground. You're losing five, six, seven pound in weight because you you push to the limit every day. So I couldn't wait to get home. I'd get in bed and it'd just go ping in my head. Ah, oh, dickhead, you're not going to sleep. And I'd literally write. I'd be lying there in my best. And I'd sit there for hours. So say like I went to bed. I'd, would you start to get frustrated with yourself no, and then what? No, no, no. I'd close my eyes, right? I'd feel myself drifting off and I'd jump. I'd literally jump like my body was saying, you're not going to sleep, mate. I don't know why. And then I'd be thinking about everything that had been going on. Then I'd be thinking about fighting. Then I'd be thinking about my weight. Before I knew it, mate, I was watching um, the Strongman contest at four o'clock in the morning on the telly. And then Jerry beat my door at six. Oh god, with no sleep. And then again, I'd have to do it again. So this is why I took sleeping tablets. It had. Well, you can had, understand, can't you? Yours for sleeping tablets. You can understand why people turn to fucking drugs to drink to everything mm. else. Honest, and you know what though? Especially like, to blank, bl- like, to blank like, out. Like, like I'm saying right now, that wasn't the right thing to do. It probably cost me winning a lot more. But I'm not, I'm not bitter. Like I said, I'm not saying that as an excuse. It's not an excuse. That was just what I went through. Um, I didn't fucking win whatever it's it, it, not that you know there my point being now though anybody that's struggling going through like that sort of stuff now it doesn't have to be with what in terms of what I was going through mentally in any aspect of life if you're struggling with anxiety like that like you can't deal with it there is people to speak to and I was one of them stubborn don't fucking need a counsellor you know, I'm a grown man. I'm, I'm a fighter. I, I don't need it. I can, you know, I can deal with this by myself. Did a fuck mate. I took them from the age of eighteen till I was thirty-seven. That's how long it went on for with me. Thirty-seven, yeah. Thirty-seven. Bloody hell. Thirty-seven. Mate. And if there's ever a sport. but don't get me wrong. Look, between the age of like, say, thirty-six. No, yeah, 30, thirty-five to thirty-six, thirty-seven. I didn't take them as much. I didn't. It was just every now and then. But like from the age of 18, when Gaza gave me them the first time till I was that age, I abused them. But I always thought, like, don't need a counsellor, don't need help, I'll deal with it, it'll be all right, it'll pass. Mm. Obviously, fucking, how many years was that? <laughs> 20 years? Yeah, yeah. 
Do you know what I mean? I and it well, doesn't pass him. And, and I was too proud to look for help. Yeah. You need to speak. Like when I went to a counselor, when, when, when I lost my mum, the job, like I said last time, the job sent me to it. And I had that attitude and that, that thought of like, it's not going to work. I went in there thinking it's not going to work. But after speaking to someone like that, that, like I said last time, no no connection to me or no judgment. Or no, it fucking it weird. It just felt like I had the weight lifted off my shoulders. I felt better when I got out of there. And then mm. it had a knock-on effect. Then I started thinking to myself, well, yeah, that did work. Maybe I'd make another appointment. Then because I, I knew I was making another appointment and I made one, I felt better in myself. So there I could function better. And I could just build on that. It, small steps. It just helps you build. Can I, can yeah. I ask you on that? Not that me or you are like a, a super, super famous, nothing like that. But on a, on a personal note, I remember when I was struggling after I come out of the Marines and I just split up from Alba's mum and I was drinking too much. I was gambling too much. And wasn't there wasn't any specifically one thing, for example, you just sleeping tablets or whatever. There was just seems to be loads of things in my life going wrong. My head was battered. And yet I was getting up on stage, doing these motivational talks, and getting standing ovations, everyone saying I was great, but my life was in turmoil. At the point when I was like, I need to go and speak to someone. I want to get, get counselling. My ego was the thing that stopped me and nearly killed me because it's going to sound stupid because, again, I'm not famous or nothing, but I'm thinking, the way you're thinking, I'm a fighter, I don't need help. I'm thinking, if I go into a counsellor, these people might have seen one of my motivational clips. They might have been in the audience. They might have seen this. I can't go in and say, I'm fucking struggling here when I'm thinking they're going to judge me and go, you're a fucking motivational speaker. How the f- like you can't. See, you're you're fucking. With, you're lying but to everybody. That's because and, we don't understand what counselors and, are before that. You and didn't my, my ego kind of had though. While I was like, it was almost didn't trust them. I was like, they're gonna mm. not that they're gonna know I'm Andy Graham, but I, I felt I can't go in because they're gonna go. For example, if if I'm in the paper and says, oh, you know, injured soldier runs marathon for charity or something. Yeah. I'm thinking in my head, the next time I'm in the paper with a nice article about me. They're gonna be going to the mates. Hey, fucking hell! He was in ours no, last see, week doing see, talks because yeah. he's fucking struggling. And this, my yeah. ego there. Yeah, and imagine what it's like if you're so, super, super. Exactly, and I'm thinking it. for you, and uh, that for me was the hardest thing to to, to see, do. What 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 I come what I got from it in terms of what you you're talking about is they're not judgmental. The the sort of like that wall you're trying to put up is because what you perceive they're gonna think when they don't have an opinion. They just listen to you and help you. It's a underst- trust, it's a trust underst- thing though as well, I think, isn't it? The, yeah, well, obviously you've got to trust them to be able to open your your heart to them. Yeah. You know what I mean? But they, they won't judge you to start with. They have been there with a million people that are going through the same thing as you. Mm. So they understand it better. And uh, the, the, listen, it's not, it's not, a, it's not a, a medicine. It's not a cure. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a crotch to lean on sort of thing that helps mm. you understand it better and if you understand it better then you understand like the, the the anxiety and the triggers and what happens and how to deal with it and how to go around it again it's not a fix mm. it's just a coping mechanism mm. and it helps you understand it better from a different point of view of someone that's not connected to your own someone that really hasn't got an opinion about you mm. do you know what i mean from the outside looking in it's just and yeah. someone that's professionally yeah because i found when, I was, to, area. when I was speaking to for example my dad he's my best mate and I'd always speak to him about stuff. That's boss. That, that's like me with my alpha, you know. Yeah. I, honest to God, my but, alpha is fucking boss. Yeah, same with mine. And it's... But again, though, it, you can't really take advice of someone who, who knows everything, who knows too much almost. I mean, you can, mm. but like... It's funny, isn't it, though, how talking about it just helps, isn't it? It's so weird. weird yeah. I, come yeah. out of, I come out of our last one, this, happy as hell. Yeah. It's like, you know what? I just, say that, I just yeah. feel like I've just got a weight lifted off me back. Literally, everyone. Like I needed to just let that out. You know what I mean? Everyone we've had on the pod texts me the next like, day and goes, fucking hell, I ain't proper enjoyed that. Just little trip down memory lane and that. It's boss me. I, 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 think, I think as well, people need to watch this like and understand when I'm saying about a counsellor. It'll be similar to this. Oh, yeah. Mm. It's similar. It's exactly. So if they've got any. Like you had them perceived it's your ego, things it? of, of, of a counsellor. This is exactly how it is. They listen, yeah. they talk, the, they understand. One of the best things for me, this, so before I was going through, um, when I was going through all that shit, say maybe, I think it was 2000, 
14, 13, 14, It was 15. a bad year, 2014, for me as well. It was fucking one of them years where everyone's, <laughs> everyone's world just yeah. turned upside down. Mine just went to... Well, uh, what, was, what was so hard about it was I'm, I'm at the Invictus Games, winning gold fucking on the telly every fucking with Prince Harry all the time and getting all this work and all that. It was great. And and of course, then when people see you out, they're like, fucking hell, how's Harry doing? And you know, when you're here and everywhere. And, but inside, you're fucking hurting. Of Do you course. know what I mean? And you're drinking too much, you're gambling too much, you're fucking relationships going down a swanny. But yeah, I'm trying to put up this, oh um, yeah, no, it's great, I'm doing speaking here and there and that. And and then, so I, and for a couple of years, I was just winging it, just blagging it, you know what I mean? And it was only when, uh, who's thankfully one of my best mates now, Phil Reed, we had his dad Brian on. When I sat down with him and wrote my book, that was like counselling, just sitting down with him. And it was someone who, oh, he wasn't judging me. And, you know, he was like, what was it like growing up? And I spoke about my mum and about things that, that had happened like fucking nearly 20 years ago. That you'd forgot about? That I'd, yeah, and I'd, me and him are sitting there crying our eyes. I'm not even drunk, like, just as half a pint and fucking me and him are crying. And then I come away from it and was like, oh, that's great, that. And then as the book went on... Do you know how, me, I see how much that just made me smile? That's like fucking boss listening to that. I am, like, like I was saying before... People that have a situation, I'm so happy for them. Mm. Genuinely, that just proper made me smile. It's fucking boss here, isn't it? Yeah. But, my, but my, and then it went on from like talking about my mum to then the Marines, stuff like in the Marines. And then that I was maybe like, I don't know, embarrassed about or wish I'd done different or anything. And then to get them blown up and then I'd not spoke about not being able to have kids opened up about that. And then it was in the book. And then once people started reading the book and then people were getting in touch with me saying, oh, mate, fucking I had no idea. And people were saying oh mate I struggle to have kids and we end up going through IVF or I lost my mum at this age and I've been drinking too gam- or gambling or I'm split and you think why is I'm it not o- I'm not the only one who's fucking yeah. been through this yeah. shit why is it that us as, as like humans lads whatever maybe it's our age we just turn to drink just turn to drink and drugs I mean me for me my drug was, was sleeping tablets I've never touched drugs and never have because of, of the career I've had and I never would to be fair I just don't get it. I've never touched but, drugs, man. It's been drinking, gambling, man. Has, yeah, I like mm. gambling. Don't get me wrong, I play the slots, that's about it. But listen, I'm a tight ass. So I, 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 I if I lose 20 quid, I'm devastated. So <laughs> good. I think it goes back, like I was saying last time, it goes back to what I've had to sacrifice to get what I've got. Do you know mm. what I mean? It's like, I, I, think I fucking, and listen, I'm no different. Like, <clears throat> one of my best mates, Carl Skeggs, um, I go on about this and like, look what I've had to sacrifice. He said, Dodd. Do you think you doing that any more different from me getting up at five o'clock in the morning and going to work for 12 hours a day? Mm. And it's not really. I mean, it hurts a little bit more getting punched in the head, but he's right what he's it's saying. Argument that, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. He's right what he's saying. You know, these people that do that every day, day in, day out, they have a different type of struggle, not just physical, whereas mine's physical, mm. like getting punched and dieting and stuff. There's is mental, the rigmarole of doing the same shit every day, the pressures of... So, each to their own. They've all got their own um, things that, that that don't go in their favour. And he was mm. like, that's what he explained to me. He was like, Dodd, they're going through the same as what I've been through the same, but you've been through just in a different way. So don't ever think that, you know, it's, they're less oh, feel sorry for Dodd. Yeah, feel yeah. sorry for Dodd. Oh, do you know what mm, I mean? It's not yeah, because yeah. they're going through it as well, mate. Mm. One, like, Carl Skeggs is like, him and Eddie, him, Eddie and Mark, they're like my oldest friends. I Like I said, I went to crash with Eddie and that's how long I've known him for. But Carl's like, Carl and Yingy, like my best mate. And you know what? They're all, we're all like that. All my mates, Morsey, Yingy, Eddie, Carl, Dean, we're all really close. Um, but Carl's doesn't drink, never drank, doesn't eat pork. I'm like, are you Muslim? <laughs> it's like, he's never... Um, He's, he's never really been one to drink or do, and he's always been dead sensible, hard worker, dead sensible. It's the person that I go to for advice because mm. he'll never lie to me. Mm. He always tells me real how it is and he always pulls me out of the shit when I lose my head because I'm a bit hot headed. I am, and I've had a couple of situations in work where people perceive me as being aggressive. It's not that I'm aggressive, I'm just passionate. Mm. I'm really passionate. I mean, I'm the least, most aggressive person you could ever want to meet. I'd rather someone walk away from my company and go, bloody hell, a nice fella. I'm not, why we can fight. That's what I want people yeah, yeah. to think about me and the way I am. Mm. And um, I think a lot of fighters are like that, though, aren't they? I don't know. Certainly don't look... <laughs> some of them. <laughs> some of them. <laughs> we, can I just um, just say, before um, before we started this, um, I think we, Andy texted me saying what we're going to talk about. And um, I said, don't worry. 
<laughs> do not worry what I wanted to um, touch on first which we've already done an hour but I wanted to start off with we've done an hour already <laughs> yeah. I think I was oh. texting not, not like worries but I was like it'll be boss because fucking Tony's great anyway and, and that many people want but, but I was going no but genuinely what are we what is the topic like <laughs> But what I wanted to we, we, go ahead. Um, is um, the YouTube fighters, which I know were a, a good few months past. Although they're doing another oh, one, you know? the, 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 Yeah, um, the, Logan the, the Paul's brother. brother. What are... Fucking idiots. <laughs> I didn't even have to ask the question. Fucking... <laughs> but yeah, well, they are then. I'm going to throw this one to you then. Calling them idiots. Party, though, is kind of like if you see someone doing well, you know, made up. Okay, but don't try and perceive it as you're you're not having a fight, mate. You just just you're putting you're putting it out there for your fans from the from the YouTube thing, but you're just using boxing as a thing. And listen, like I said, if it makes money, it makes sense. They're making money, making sense. That's fine for them. I think I hold a little bit of resentment because it's your sport. It's my sport. What I had to sacrifice to get the least what I got, nothing compared to them, and they've never really had that. Yeah, yeah. Poor yeah. Quality, it's hard. Poor it's just, it's just. I hard. think I think I said this last time we spoke about it. Liam Smith, I think it was said said it great, and he went, "Look, I love playing football. Steven Gerrard's my idol. Just because I've got a fucking million followers on social media doesn't give me the right to go and play football with Steven Gerrard." Exactly, exactly. <laughs> beefy, well in that. that was, I see, I was just trying to find the right words to 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 to, to like explain it as politically correct as I could. If I said what I want to say, then. Have you one, it sound like a hypocrite because of what I said before, but two, <laughs> just infuriates me. Have you watched the fight? Have you watched them fight? I watched the clip. It was bad. I watched the clip only because it got put on Sky and like they, they showed a bit of one of them, the, the poor. And so from a professional... Can I just find a, a little a clip? Yeah, no, wasn't it, it wasn't it, a professional... Yeah, it wasn't a professional fight. Could, to, but didn't they... Aren't they classes... They've got a license, yeah. They've got a license, But this yeah, is yeah. the thing. Anyone can have a license. Right. Anyone can be a professional fighter. So you, th- you, when you say professional, you think of professional football player, top of the league, blah blah blah. Professional fighter, at Mayweather, but yeah, no, you can go to a manager if you sell. If it, I guarantee you now, if you said, listen, I can sell five hundred tickets, did have you licensed up the next day? Can you help me, Tony? I can't. If you want to fight, lad, yeah, you can. <laughs> you, you, know, you, know, you, know, you know what's funny? <laughs> Training at, at the Rotunda, right? And I, I started doing the pads uh, with Mikey and. Uh, I love, love doing it, do it Monday, Wednesday, Friday, half an hour, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then I do weights after it. And I feel I'm getting all right at it, do you know what I mean? I'm thinking, like, putting the combos together, and I feel fucking great. And then I was in the gym last week with uh, Molly. Molly's in there working with Joe. And you see Molly... Uh, and boxing's not even her, like, number no. one thing. She but, can fight, though. But that's what I mean. But that, this, she's not even, like, as in just a boxer. She's a UFC fighter, so she's an all-rounder. I'm watching her, fucking on the pads with Joe, I'm like... Oh my, here's me coming out thinking, oh yeah, I've done that, you know. <laughs> I've done a couple of months now of this. Fuck, when you see someone who knows how to fight, knows how to punch, it's a fucking different, like... Different game. It's, mm. it's a different game. It's just how to I deliver the punches correctly. Molly. Like, she's unbelievable, do you know what I mean? And I'm thinking, that's not even a, like, a main thing. No. Do you know what I mean? But no, it's part of it though, isn't it? It's part it's of it, but I mean, yeah. so but she's I mean, not a fighter. She wouldn't come out of that and go just to fight. That's what I mean. And to see the level that she was at, Striking wise, I think anyone that in in that cage that has got a good striking background that can handle himself on the floor, and I've got a head start up in front of other other cage fighters. But that's just my opinion. I think anyone that can have a good stand up, um, defend the takedowns, will have more success. Like Paul Kelly's coming back. Paul yeah. Kelly's um because he was in the UFC, Paul, and then he had problems obviously, and then he's coming back now. So I'm um, looking forward to seeing Paul because. He, his stand ups is really good. He's got good stand up and he can whack as well. I um I went down for the wrestling class. I told you last time, didn't I? Yeah, with the yeah. cowboy and he chickened the life out of me. Didn't have a chance on it. I got chickened out by every novice in there. It's a proper skill. <laughs> but uh, come on, let's see these balloons fight. You know, you see that though. Like, I mean, I say just because I'm in the boxing gym with the lads. You know, when you see, I see um Joe and Declan saying the lads, and you you think that you you know boxing. I mean, I don't profess to know anything about it and in that sense. I like watching it, but I'm not an expert or nothing. But just through me having a go and that thinking and knowing how hard it is, and then when you see the pro- you're like, this is fucking next level. Mad. It's unreal. Like I've got one of my mates who messaged me the other day, Liam O'Connor. He started doing the boxing side of things. And he's like, Dodd, I didn't understand. I just didn't get how hard it was. Yeah. And like the things that you have to do and how technical and the That's diet what I was gonna say. It's not only that you're fucked. Like if you're doing a circuit or you're lifting weights or whatever, it's tough as but you you're doing all that, blowing out your ass, 
your arms are hurting. And you can't eat. All that. Or you can't drink. Not, not even on about that for a minute. <laughs> but just in the moments, you know, your arms are hurting, you're fucked, you're breathing <sighs> heavy. But then you've got to remember all the technical side, your foot placements. No, see, this head. is the thing, no, but look, because you do it that much, for me, this is what I, the way it was for me, because you do it that much, it's like w- walking. That's what it's I'm like for me. Like walking <laughs> Look, honest to God, that's what I'm it's like thinking, for me. I'm, I'm looking down at my feet going, no, it's okay. It's I'm like walking. It, yeah. it literally is like walking to me. It's like getting on a bike and yeah, riding. Done it, yeah. done it since I was six. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's, it, that's what it is. I'll just, I've just picked a random... Uh, Go ahead, yeah. just put it on. See, that's just a pub, yeah, it's pub just, fight. That right? is just yeah. a and this plan put <laughs> with the wispy blonde hair... Put your hands up, look, watch him pull away, and his chin sky high. Watch, look. Look, pathetic. Yeah, it was bad Madness, to watch. Even, I, even I was like, this was horrendous. I'm I didn't bored, enjoy it. Bored, one bit. Do, you, Albert, do you think? Do you think that's the way it's going? Then the, you know, because Eddie Hearn was mentioning that there's some big, and he was saying some like super A list sort of type of people have been contacting. Look, and, this is the way the world's going. This YouTube stuff is taking over. The social media side of things taking over. It's unreal. Like I read that thing to you before, and you'll relate to that. Did you see me post yesterday on my Instagram? Mm, don't know. Why? Right. Yes. You, you, you might. I don't know whether you'll be too old for this year. Oh, your eighties thing. The 80s yeah, thing, thing, but it, this yeah. is so true. Look, if you watch Baywatch, followed by Gladiators, then Blind Date on a Saturday evening, mm, had four me, yeah. TV channels. Started school with singing in the main hall. Played in the woods, always rode your bike. A game was Kiss and Chase or Bulldog with not a computer in sight. Had to be in before dark. Got grounded if you were late. I got more than grounded. <laughs> not even the home phone was mobile. Yeah. Vandalism was scratching the school desk with a compass. Yeah. You've recorded the top 40 of the radio yeah. onto a tape. Got 10 sweets in a 10p mix and you turned out okay. Then repost this. This is when Britain was great. Do you know what, mate? The life was so simple back then. Yeah, it was I so remember simple all of back those then. As well. You know, you know the only thing about YouTube and sound like a hypocrite because we've got a YouTube channel in that sense. But I hate the way like it's. Um, I think I've probably moaned about this before, but it 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 seems to have. And I'll relate it back to how I know it's not a good thing, but it cuts out a lot of the hard work. Like you've just said, you've been boxing since what six, seven, eight, six, six. Mm. Well, eighty five. So, I went to watch Rocky Ford and Bolton Cinema. Eighty five. That's what sparked it. And so that you, was you've it. had that that the tip dedication and determination and that sacrifice for X amount of years YouTube is great as it is the platform mm. but it's a bit of a shortcut thing and, and the reason I, I'll say it and I was going to mention it before when we were talking but it went off but the reason shortcuts aren't good is for example when I um, when I got blown up and I got compensation you know it was just compensation to for the rest of my life because I couldn't you know I've lost my leg type thing but I, I fucking spunked some of it going down the the um, the drinking and gambling route because it I didn't feel like I'd sacrifice once yeah, I went back I didn't, feel like, you I didn't it. feel like I'd earned it. I just yeah, got yeah. given it. And and because I was young, I was fucking early twenties, got given this money. And again, not a lot you of money. You haven't got value for money at that age, though. Not, not a lot of money. And I'm talking like tens of thousands, not even nothing like that. Tens of thousands. But I thought, fucking hell, this is great. I've just been given all this money. I'm a young lad, I still feel fit and healthy. I can still walk because I've me got my prosthetic legs sorted. This is great. And get given something too easy it's for, it's not good mm. it's don't appreciate not it. good you don't appreciate, you don't it. appreciate it and I think this YouTube stuff as great as a platform it has been for loads of people it's now a little bit like the I don't know I just it's taken it's taken the value <clears throat> out of what it actually means to to yeah. grind for your success yeah I to, think to so re, um, it, it's taken it's taken the high away from they have they, I guarantee you these two won't get the high that I would have got no. being in, in that place, Madison Square Garden, wherever, at the pinnacle of boxing, blah, 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 because I ain't it to get it there. Well, you've wanted to be at that since you were, say, six. Yeah, they've, 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 probably, what, they've probably hadn't even thought about boxing 18 yeah, months before Yeah, their agent probably came to them a year ago or whatever and said, how about this? Or, yeah. and obviously, I, and before the second fight. It's not so much I feel sorry for them because they fucking... Look, they're just earning the money. That's you know, fair play. But to what I feel sorry money. for, though, is, you know, you just spoke about that Britain that we grew up in. I feel sorry now for the kids that are growing up watching this and they're going... You know, rather than, you know, getting ground and having to be in before dark and having the four channels, they're now watching this going, fucking hell, 
Mm. If if I if I don't know if I act a knobhead on social media, I get a name for myself. Whether people love me or hate me, whatever it be, I can be whatever. As long as I've got a platform and a name, I can fucking call someone out, get a YouTube fight, make loads of money. Rather than the kind of your dad going through, yeah, yeah, the sacrifice, so, yeah, yeah. sacrifice. It's about this, and I just think it gives a social media in general gives it, that wrong impression of it's an overnight thing. It's fucking life up. It's fucking life up. It is because life is not just about. T, 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 t. It's about earning stuff, being a right type of model person, you know, working for, for your things, the nice things you've got in life, not just being given it. Mm. It, it. It develops and shapes a person having to go through them struggles. Mm. Oh, massively, yeah. yeah. You, so, again, what are you really creating? You're giving the wrong impression of how life is, and it's not like that. Mm. And, okay, so say, like, it does turn out like this. What sort of a bunch of little rats are we going to have in the future with no value yeah. for nothing? Do you know what yeah. I mean? Think yeah. about it that way. Yeah. Little like, rats that are not going to have no value, no respect. Like nowadays now, right? Do you know if I was, when I was younger, if I spoke back or spoke to an adult in a bad way, my dad would have absolutely wellied me. So I'd never done it. I was always respectful to, to mm. older people or to people of, of uniform or whatever. Now all you get is, go ahead, fucking touch me. Mm. Go ahead, touch me, I'll video you. These are 14, 15-year-old kids mm. saying this to you. Do you know what I mean? Where's the respect nowadays? And in, in their little heads, they think that they're dead cool and dead mm. hard and they're dead good doing that. I guarantee they regret it when they get bigger. A lot yeah. of them will. Oh, yeah, and and I think it's a lot of the thing, rather than being scared to see your dad giving you a clip and saying don't speak to someone like that, they're thinking of if I can get something good here, a good photo or a good video, <laughs> yeah. it'll go Probably viral. On YouTube, yeah. <laughs> it'll go viral and it'll, you know, that that's my platform there that's going to yeah, go yeah. through the roof. Oh, our auntie's boxing Peter McGrail's brother on... I know Peter McGrail's cousin. The young lad. Yeah, our auntie's just drew against the anyway. So it's a good fight though because... They're a good, good fighting family, the McGrail. So yeah, it'll be, um, it'll be good. Be this Saturday, yeah. Should really, come, yeah, man. yeah. Up in I Speak might do, yeah. Where Speak is it? Sports on time. This Saturday, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna come to that. Come, mate. Be good. Yeah, but again, going back to that platform. So if people think, yeah, if people go, that's oh, fifteen year old kid go, I did that. Tony Dodson there uh, used to be fucking used to be a boxer. Let's, I don't know, get the video. They've got a fucking social media platform. It goes viral. That's then giving them the platform to give them a voice to talk shit, to do fucking knobhead things. Of course. And then mm. suddenly then that's the, oh, well, I've got 20,000 followers now. I've got a bit more of a voice. I've got it. And then I've got 50,000 more I can now do. And rather than, you know, <laughs> go in the gym and fucking I don't, using you maybe as a mentor and like yeah. someone go, Tony, look, maybe I've respected you as a boxer. Fucking hell, I loved watching you work. I've YouTubed all your fights. Can you I give want, me any I want advice to be like you. Can I get tips? And yeah, yeah, can I just spend some time in your company? Maybe the old school way. People just go at it the fucking completely wrong way now. It's just wrong. That's what I'm saying about creating rats. That's what's going to happen. They're just going to have that mentality where it's easy. I can do what I want, go what I want, speak to what I want. And... Do you not think every generation has this thing where they think there's something like social media seems, seems to be the thing now, that there's this one bad thing like, you know, probably when you were younger it might have been hanging like, around on street corners with mates that lads that wanted a drink that was my thing that, that do you was, know what I mean yeah, that was the bad thing to do the, yeah I think there's all, they're always, always well, I'm always bullish on humani- <laughs> humans I think like I, do, I, I do think there is a point though which you'll have to be careful on in the sense of you're always and the example I'm going to give is quite a funny one so if people always think it was worse back then or harder back then or something or it was so what I'm getting to is when I was going through Royal Marine training, you'd have to climb the 30 foot ropes, carrying 21 pounds of kit and your rifle. And obviously when you first start doing it, it's a fucking hangout and you're doing halfway back down, halfway back down. And then I remember the corporal going to me, this is nothing lads, you know, back in my day, you used to have to climb to the top, hold onto the bar and do 10 pull ups. Now he was fucking chatting shit, you didn't. <laughs> but it's that thing of back in my day, it was, it was this, it was that. Yeah. And I think as much as I think that we're right in what we're saying, I reckon you'll get people going, oh yeah, but fucking back in your day, do you mm. know what I mean? It was, it was, yeah, yeah. But look, I said this the other day to one of the lads, and back in my day, weren't that long ago. You really think, yeah, put it in context, yeah. it's not that long ago. How much it's changed from even early early two thousands to what it's it's like now? It's vastly changed, fast. Do you think it's coming down to as well that? you know, society because of technology, because of social media is changing so quick. Our brains don't know how to act in certain situations. I don't think we've thought of the consequences of it. 
yeah. I don't think we have thought of I don't think it's been thought through or maybe it has and then when it's been too late then they've thought well there's nothing I can do about it now do you know what I mean because mm. it is like my little girl's seven she Serena rung me yesterday the baby's mum and she said um, worried about her I said well why she went she's she's been watching all her mates on Instagram I, don't, I won't let her on Instagram but she's on YouTube and she's on Instagram she's saying like she's comparing herself to all these girls and like oh, saying like I, I how old is she again seven, seven. Fucking she's hell, saying yeah. uh, you know I'm ugly I blah blah, blah. my my little girls are gorgeous and she's comparing herself to all these fake they, what are With they the called filters, on filters and, all and all that, yeah. she's thinking that she's different and I'm thinking to myself, what is that doing to her? So she's barred off it all now. Do you know what I mean? I'm yeah, not letting on it. But again, it's hard to take it away from them when yeah, everyone else, everyone everyone's on it. Yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? It's. I think though, you know the way. But at seven, no saying stuff Se- like that. Yeah, seven. Yeah. I so don't know how long it takes though for your brain to like evolution. But I'm guessing for a hundred thousand years there was one way to hunt for for cattle. You know, back when we were in what are they, what's it called, like Neanderthal times or whatever. Yeah, yeah. You know, for so for hundred years, our, our brains could slowly get used to the thought. Hunter gatherers, hunter gatherers, yeah. yeah. That's how. Yeah. We, and then for an, like, another hundred of years, you know, we learned how to do fire, and that lasted however long. And then for another hundred thousand years, we, whereas now we're in the space of, like you say, not even that long ago, like twenty years ago, you've got all this knowledge at your fingertips to just go, oh right, that's how we learn how to do that. This is how. And I think sometimes you know, our brains are just like. Do you know what I think? That's more much, relevant yeah. with everything. Can you remember having to use a map? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Well, I, I funny, obviously in the we're... Marines had it a lot, but I, I'd be fucked now. I'd, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just look at your phone. We you think about yeah, my, like, especially with you and, and myself with what I do, like meetings and things like that, and trying to find somewhere. Mm. Like, how, how how did you do it? You just <laughs> you use the map. You just use the map because I I used to obviously I I moved to London when I, when I was how old was I? Nineteen, I think I was. I moved to London with Jimmy Tibbs in the Lennox Lewis Centre in Hackney. I used to have to drive down on a Sunday night, drive back on a Friday, Friday night. Um, oh, it's horrific, the traffic, by the way. It used to take like eight, nine hours mm. because it was that busy back then. God knows what it's like now. Um, but again, we had to well, get a map A to Z map. Yeah, A to Z map. And we had to like stay clocking the, the junctions. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we done it. You know what I mean? We done it. Yeah. You can do it. But it's like funny, now actually, it's yeah, just so the, easy. When the signs are there, the signs are there for something, aren't they? Yeah, you know I mean? <laughs> to get where you're going. <laughs> to get where you you're get going. Some water. Yeah. yeah, noise. So that was the thing back then. It I, was... I do think it's like it. Again, it's I use it every day, so I'll be, I'm sound like a hypocrite, but like it, it does make me sad. It's probably it doesn't anger me or nothing like that. It just makes me sad to think that like we've things have become so easy that it can sometimes. I, yeah, I guess what I'm trying to say is I feel grateful that. I've had, for example, the upbringing I've had through my dad being kept grounded. And I'm glad in a way I've had, I'm not glad my mum died when I was 12, but I've, I'm glad I've had hardships to know how shit life can get. And I've, I'm glad I've had to sacrifice for certain things. And I'm, I'm glad. It's character building. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad I've had my, my struggles when I first got injured, the fucking, you know, relationships breaking down and, and the fucking money I've spunked because it's, I've had the hardships and those sacrifices. Whereas now I feel, you know, I'm in a much better place where I don't think the way the social media is going and, and the way kids are growing up with maybe not the same values and models like we said before it's difficult then for older kids and young people to have those same things I've went through to kind of maybe give them that wake up call that perspective that yeah. perspective yeah, sorry yeah, 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 to, word, to yeah. give them that character building yeah. same to build them as people and they're, they're influenced by it that much that it does alter who they are mm. Do you know it holds them back they, mm. they, like our auntie is like really emotional so I think he would have been like a little bit younger that would affect them more because of the way social media is and how much it like kids must feel so I don't know insecure and like different from everything that they see because try and explain to our Lucia it's not real it's not it's bu- it's mm. bullshit it's it's just lies everyone on on Instagram about how perfect the life is and how much yeah, that's not the way Give it, it is. Rest, yeah, <laughs> I, I hate right, and this is gonna sound jealous, but I hate, and I don't mean me because of, of my story, but I know so many fucking cool people. Like I think your story you. too is fucking yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's really unbelievable. You know, a lot of the guests we've had on have got so like just some of the stories are incredible, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, like really mad. are incredible. Yeah. But as people, nice, genuine people, and, I, and it fucking pisses me off the way kids are looking up. For example, this KSI guy or Logan Paul. You know, Paul. I've just and I think like you've got someone like. 
like yourself, you've got someone like like Brian Mead, like fucking great journalist, Scouser done great. There's no kids I don't reckon growing up now thinking I want to be a Brian Reid no, I want to be a writer no, I want to be a journalist I want to I want to shit. I yeah, write yeah. in a national newspaper I want to have an what impact I think? we need what, the what, 4 million views on our stuff not on there do you know, do you know, <laughs> what, see, do you know what the thing that they need to do right when I was a kid it might have been the same for you maybe I'm not sure youth clubs mm. did you have youth clubs yeah we had mm. Bankfield House on Banks Road Garston right we used to go away with Bankfield House two or three times a year to places like here uh, Nanta, Stevens Park. We used to stay there for a week. We used to go out on um, canoeing, mm. um, rock climbing. And like, you wouldn't be able to do it now because of health and safety stuff and all laws and whatever. And But back then, ugh, we were allowed to be chastised by the people who were in charge because your parents would go, they'd sign a form and they'd say, listen, I'm giving you permission. You better show them respect yeah. you give me, blah, blah. And I've never we'd be chastised by Steve-O, his name was, and JB and these people that used to run this house. So we always had that respect for them. And we, don't get me wrong, we were still naughty, we were just kids, but mm. we'd done all this thing, and it, like I was going back to it, it's character building, doing mm. all these things. But now, you wouldn't even be allowed to do that now with kids. Mm. Take them away, they'd be all health and safety stuff, and this and that. And listen, I, I get it, it's there for the reason, because there's been problems, and you know maybe kids have been abused or like things have happened they've been hurt or they've been mm. assaulted or things do happen but again I was dead lucky being an 80s child yeah. to have all them things in place yeah, and, yeah. and go away with me mates and, and learn to be respectful and, and do all these outdoor things and stuff I mean if if that could be brought back for the kid I don't know whether they would they probably want to sit but in it's the that, PlayStation it's that thing that you're Nintendo. saying there though mate that like it's like because there was no phones, there was no technology, there was no social media. All you were thinking about is you away with, in that week with your mates. Yep. Rock climbing. That was all canoeing. your focus and energy yeah. was on this. You weren't thinking fishing. While like, you done that when today's kids, you'd have two of them on the on the wall rock climbing, thinking you'd, when am I going home to play Fortnite? Well, you'd have yeah. one of them, one of them filming the other one, and then you'd have a couple of them on like that on yeah, the phones. Yeah. So the, the, hey, even, while, while one of them present. drops and dies because yeah. he's on his phone, they're not even present in the moment. I guess are you yeah, anymore? Because yeah. you're always thinking of this this fake world. That's, yeah, yeah, to get it on there. like a rock concert, you've seen them all with the phones up like this. Yeah. No, it's mad, you're, isn't it? You're missing the moment. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Talk about fake world. I don't. The best. Uh, I don't know if you saw Ricky Gervais at the Golden Globes. His very oh, end. Yeah, yeah, thing, amazing. Yeah. At the end when he said. Um, you all know nothing. I, th- I think you said something. You spent less time in school than Greta Thunberg. Yeah. You know nothing about the real world. Just come up here, accept your award, and fuck off. They say, yeah, thank you, God. <laughs> thank you, agents, and yeah, then fuck off. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's real. He's, he's right, though. He's good. Ricky, yeah, right. But again, you know why I think he's so well liked and so well respected? He didn't get fame till he was like 40, did he? Yeah, yeah. He didn't yeah. get money and fame till he was 40. So he's so hope, he'd, hope for me and 40. Hope, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he lived in that real world, which I think is a, which I think is, is, is a massive thing. So in terms of, of growing up for like the younger ones that are, I I'm, I'm try, I'm try, I had loads of things in my mind that I wanted to talk about and like think it just never seems to come into fruition when I'm doing it. We'll probably get a million more messages saying good part three. But like, like these kids growing up now, right? Look, when you're young, for me, I always like I said this last time. I always thought it was gonna last forever. Mm. You'd always think. Because every day feels the same, and your repetition is is this, that's what boxing is. It's just repetition, so it's the same. You know, oh, same again. It's gonna go. Trust me, it goes like that. It's gone. So everybody, like I, I could have had me. I had forty two. I reckon I could have had ninety fights. The amount of fights I had to pull out of because of injuries, because of being out of shape, not being in the gym. I, I mean, like I said, WBC, WBO world titles. I could have fought for them. I could have fought for them, but I wasn't in the gym my own fault so you need to <clears throat> all the young ones coming through you need to I'm not saying go in every day and train like an absolute bastard and, and leave it all in the gym every day you've got to have someone that as a trainer or a conditioner understands your body to hold your back put you forward hold your back put you forward turn the key when it needs to be turned and, and, and just c- like control it right but stay in the gym take every opportunity you can because it's a short career. Mm. The opportunities don't last forever. And while you, literally... That when can you, be taken to the life though in general, mate. In, yeah, yeah, I mean? maybe, but in terms of fighting-wise, it's literally what you turn pro, you six, eight-year career, maybe, if you're lucky. I was dead lucky. Me, I turned pro in 99, didn't finish till 2017. 2017, so, what the hell? Nearly 20 years as a pro. Mm. That's why I look like this. <laughs> 
you know what I mean? So I just think anyone listening, you need to grasp every opportunity with both fans because it doesn't last forever. And we're very, very, as a fighter, you're very blessed to be able to to do it on a professional level with the social media and with the with the prospects of what you possibly could earn. It's a, it's a massive opportunity and you need to understand that it doesn't happen for everybody. You're very, very lucky to be, if you've got a pro contract or if you're on a matchroom card or a, a Warren card or whoever, enjoy it while it lasts because it doesn't last forever because when it's gone, you will miss it. Mm. Can, I, uh, can I ask, we're nearly at the end of... Um January, you don't strike me as a um, New Year's resolution sort of kind of guy, but do you set them? Do you do them? To be honest, right, when my mum died, all I wanted to do was be happy. I'd been miserable for six years, like on a scale that I I can't talk about it on this because so many people that, like, it'll affect and I've come back. I can't be arsed with it, so I went through a really, like... I would never ever do something bad to myself but I got as close as you possibly could to being on the edge like bad like like I'd never like it like now I've got a lump in my throat thinking about how fucking bad I was I was in a bad place but to your face like you said to yeah. everyone's face I was sound mm. I was I'm alright I'm sound but I go on by myself and I weren't I was fucking bad I was honest I never ever so when my ma died Something, something switched and I just thought you know what I just want to be a better person I want to stay true to what I believe in and my morals and what I stand for as a human and like like that that, that can mean like just always be polite little things doesn't mm. have to be big things I'm not talking about drastic changes be a good dad to me to me kids be a good family member to me dad, my stepmom, Christine, um, my brothers, my sisters. Just just be a better person and cut out that shit that has kept me down for six years. You know what's really interesting about that? And do you think it is because your mum? Because when me and Tom had this chat, I had kind of a few goals that I'd like to do, but a big one for me was I was like, I just want to be happy. And do you think that comes but from? That's what yeah, you yeah, said. Yeah, yeah. Do you think that comes yeah. from though, like losing someone as big in your life as your mum? Like when? Because I, I, I've been like I, like my mum, has been there twenty years this year, it's mad twenty years. But but still now it's still ever present that I'm like I know how, you know, hard it was, how, how much it hurts still. So now I'm just like you know what? I just want to be fucking happy. Just, how long did it go on for with your mum? How long did it last? She was diagnosed in May and then died in September. She, so for me, for me, four months. She lasted four. five years. Mm. So it was five years of watching her deteriorate. And that played heavy, heavy on me. Because you're watching a person transform, change the way they look. Mm. And and a, and a usual happy, jolly self change. And knowing that, and like I talk to her sometimes and you could sense it in her voice that she's scared. Mm. I'll show you a video, I've got a video on the thing and I was telling my mum like people were messaging me because I never like I never put stuff up about my mum because I wanted attention. I said this last time again and I'll I'll just say it again. I never put it up because I wanted attention. But in, for me, I wanted my mum to see hope. So whenever I put anything up about it, I tell her what people were commenting, mm. and it made me my smile, mm. made the smile knowing people cared about it. Do you know what I mean? Like a proper, it like a proper made the smile, and that for me was worth its weight in gold. So um. I done a video. I was, I was reading all the, the comments to her. I was saying, "Mom, do you want to say something back?" She went, "Yeah, I'll say something back to them." And um, a video that it's on me home, thinking I'll show you it. And she's like, "I just want to thank everyone." She just she broke down. And it fucking, it's the only video I've got of her talking. Mm. And it's horrible to see it with her being in that state. Yeah, do you yeah. know what I mean? But it made her happy that people. That's why she got emotional. I think mm. not just because she was scared because she knew what was going to happen, but because she, people cared, mm. and it was. It, she when you're in it. that, you want to know as well, don't you? That there are people caring when you're in that in that position. I'm, I'm imagining you want to know that. There's how we people. mad as humans, though. It's the, the things that we look to for comfort. Mm. But do you think because of the, obviously your mum's your mum? That's the big. Everyone fucking loves the mum in that sense. So do you think when you've sadly lost it, that's been your point to go? You know what? From now on, the only goals I'm setting is just I want to be happy. I want to be a better person. I do, I did, and then it sort of like, 
I switched off like the thoughts and the feelings that I was having at that time over situations and I just thought, fuck that. I, I, I don't want to be lying in that bed like she is now thinking I should have. I'd done that enough with my boxing career. Mm. I should have done this or I could have done that or where would I have been? This is why I said to you, it's like I was at peace with it because I've had them arguments with, with, with my head over the years of what I should have and could have and I can't change it. It's done. I had a good career. It's done and dusted. But I don't ever want to be on my deathbed where I can't do nothing about it. Now I can do something about it. I can make my life better. I can be happier. Mm. I can make my kids happy. I can see joy. I can see like a way of doing it now with my new job and and like me as a person, how I've changed physically, mentally, and I just I just want to be happy. That is it. I just want to be happy. And you know what? I just want to make everyone around me that I bother with happy. And like I'm genuinely. Isn't it mad that you have to go through something like that? Like your mum passed away, seeing your mum over the years deteriorate, and to kind of make that to be that. You know what? This is what I want. I want to be happy. like you think. You think most people would think, hey, I want to be happy, I want to yeah. be happy. But it takes something mad, doesn't it, yeah. to make you realise? Understand and go, how, how fragile life is yeah, yeah. and like how, how easy it can be taken away from you. That's why I always start my talks. Listen, I've been very lucky. I've spoke all over the world now from primary schools to fucking England football team, everyone in between. I always start the presentation off with a picture of me and my mum. And I say, I, lost, I tell them the story that I lost my mum at 12. And I say, no matter what I'm going to talk about over the next 40 minutes, let me tell you all now, life is fucking hard. You do not need to get blown up in Afghanistan to realise life can be shit. Because I think once you get that in your head, that life's fucking hard, whether it's financial reasons, whether it's relationship problems, whether it's your job, whatever it may be, mm. fucking life is hard. And you, you don't have to wait to get fucking blown up or to lose your mum to go, you know what, I need to start being happy. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's fucking, it's hard, let me tell you. It's, we're, we're it's mad that when you're young, though, you have a pre- perceived about life that it is sunshines and rainbows keep using that phrase but you know what I mean you, you don't understand when you're young no. so for people to have like the picture of your mum there your experiences it just hits home a little bit mm. it's real mm. so they've seen it they've experienced it through you and your words and even if it helps one of them it's it's worth its weight in gold mm. oh yeah that's the thing I think we spoke the other day if there's like one bit of advice I'd love to kind of leave with people it's like I'd love young people to just realise now that kind of what me and you have it's just like the goal is in life to be happy you know be a good person try and make those around you happy try and you know when you have chance encounters with people on the street hopefully they walk away going he's made me feel good him yeah, he's put course, a smile yeah. on my face that, 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 you feel like you've succeeded a little bit there if you can have that effect on someone yeah. I would anyway that's the way, that's the way I'd, I'd think about it I buzz on see, seeing people smile and seeing people have success and stuff like I said before but I like I'd like to do more of it. Like, mm. you must, like, see all them people there when you declare oh, them at the end. I wasn't. get the best feeling ever. And it, r- you can't, if you could bottle that up and sell it, mate. You know yeah. what? <laughs> this sounds so fucking cheesy, and obviously I don't do the speaking enough for, like, the, the, this isn't obviously fame, but that side of it. I took my little girl to a play centre yesterday, and I'm sitting there, I had my um, laptop out, and I was about to start doing some emails while she's playing in this play centre, and uh, a woman come up to me with a, with a kid, maybe age about eight, and he went, I it's Andy, isn't it? I said, yeah. And she went, oh, my son, um, you come into his primary school the other week and he hasn't stopped talking about you. Can you get a quick photo? She said, you're his biggest fan, obviously behind Mo Salah. And I got, <laughs> got, got a photo with this kid. Don't mind I, taking a back step to yeah, be Yeah, exactly. But you know, for me, mate, that feeling. How good is it? I yeah. was like, a fucking kid there, seven or eight, has went home, told his mum about me. He's just pinged me and was like, that's Andy. And I was like, to know that I've had an impact on, like, you that, that school could have paid doing. me a million quid to do that talk, and it wouldn't have felt as good as that. As, as that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I had a similar situation, and when we, we went to it, um, so when when you get a job, obviously you're sitting in the thing, you've, you've been there, the, the alarms go off, a person's reported. Mm. My so dad says that, then that's when it's fucking real. That's when you know like, yeah. the shit's going to hit the fan. So, person's reported, who doesn't speak, Um Alderwood Avenue, above the kebab shop, these people on the balconies can't get out. So I'm thinking, God, switch on time now. You know what I mean? We, um, when it's serious like that, you, you've got to switch on because you can come into anything. You mm. don't know what you're going to. So on the way there, blue light it there, comes through on the radio, um, multiple calls from the public saying that these people on the balconies with the kids screaming to get out, can't get out, <coughs> smoke coming from the building, blah, blah, blah. So 
said, this is a goer, this proper goer. Anyway, we get there, and rightly so, they're above, the, the, you know, the smoke things coming out. So, luckily, when it was all sorted, what had happened, um, the communal hall was full of bins, and someone had set it on fire, and uh, the smoke had gone from the communal hall, spread up, and the only place where they could go with, with safe air was outside on mm. the balcony, do you know what I mean? So, but that's what it's like. It's like the adrenaline rush, and obviously you never wish for anyone to be hurt or anything going on, but that's like, that's why I love the job so much, because we're there to like help people, and, and it just def- it's a satisfaction. So when I was on the front, these gangs of young lads, like, Ketwigs, uh, Scallies hanging around and all that. One of them called over to me and went, not with your boxing gloves today, Toe? I was like, nah, mate, I'm retired now. He said, I didn't know you were a firefighter. That's boss, boss job, blah, blah. I got talking to him. And like you've just said about the gratitude and the, the feeling of, of your buzzing, that's worth its weight in gold. Yeah. I felt like that because that kid actually recognised me for fighting, for, yeah. for knowing me through boxing and stuff. And I was like, give him a little bit of advice. Like, what are you doing? But I just had a little See chat what to you're him. Doing now, the yeah, job yeah, you're doing yeah. now. That's as well. what I mean. It's like I buzzed on it. That for me, that's like, that's, that's worth its weight in gold. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's boss. I buzz on things like that. It's like a little bit back for me. Mm. I'm thinking after all them years of doing it, people still know who we am awesome. and I get a buzz out of it it's yeah, brilliant yeah. I do I, I bet it's even better when they're younger as well isn't yeah. it you know, like, yeah this you know, kid the... was only about 15 yeah exactly 14, yeah. 15 yeah, exactly. I think as well mate like you don't always I do this little line in me talk I say like you don't always have to say something motivational or do anything in particular in that moment to inspire people like by you being the best version of you you can be that automatically inspires people like by you doing the, doing the best that you could have done in your boxing by doing as, as a fireman now when people see you just fucking give hundred percent, that's fucking inspirational. Yeah, loads of people messaged me over over the last one, just like, um, listen to the podcast. Didn't realise that you went through that, um, and you know what, I'm going through a bit myself. But listening to you and knowing that you've come out the other side has given me such hope. And so, I mean, this is like three, four people with the same sort of message because they're going through stuff. Mm. I didn't realise that me just talking, was, I'm just me, I'm just fucking a normal mm. normal <laughs> lad like like yourselves, just, as, as me colleague says, just just having a go at life. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Just trying to get on with it, just having a go, doing a shit job, but I'm having a go at life. <laughs> but to, to get messages like that, where they inspire people just to, just to see, because I've been in a dark place, like I was saying before, you really don't see a way out, you know. Oh yeah. You really don't see a way out. You just think that this is it, mate. That it's, I'm done. It's fucking. What the fuck's the point? Mm. What is the point? You know what I mean? You just don't see a way out. But for them to like message me and I've helped them as little as it is, I fucking buzzing with that. I honestly. Mm. I always think, mate, as well. Like them uh, listening to your story, like, you you might not have helped them, and and that might be that's not necessarily them through all the shit and life's now suddenly good because they've heard your story, but. What it does is it acts like a little adrenaline shot. And for that day, it just gives them that little perk and go, you know what? Look, I can do this. And that's the first step in them starting to get I think, the shit I think together. one thing about everyone, like, like you're saying, just give them a little perk. It made me think of, don't know why, just randomly coming to me head about how I knew I could fight. And like what, what, what made me like take that route, how I could fight. Because obviously I watched the Rocky thing when I was five. But I, I just f- I don't know why. My first fight that I ever had just come in my head. And um, I was like a duck to water. I was in I was in, in school. He was a kid. Neil Hooper, his name was. God rest his soul, he's passed now. Um, he was like a big kid. Like this kid, I think he was like six foot nine in the end. But when we were in school, he was two years above me. And he was like the cock of the school and whatever. I don't even know why I've just brought this up, but it just come into my head, so I'm going to talk about it anyway. So, um, obviously, I was boxing at the time, and the whole school knew I was boxing, but I was never really a fighter. Um, so, I didn't know what I was capable of doing. I never never did. I think I was only about six, maybe seven. So, anyway, this kid, we were in the hallway, but there was a cloakroom, the old Banks Road School. It was like a fucking big haunted house. It was, it was massive. It was just so scary. <laughs> So anyway, we were by the cloakroom and something went on and I was like, I said something to him and I turned around and he just went, bang, spark me. He fucking ran in my eye while I was like, shit myself. Walked away when I told one of my other mates. He was like, what happened? I was like, yeah, he's, he's, I'm not having a nap. So he arranged a straightener for me. 
with this kid. I was only seven. I like the whole school heard about it then because <laughs> I was a boxer. <laughs> and he was like the cock of his year, older than me, blah, 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 blah. And um, so after school, we all went to Middle Park, which was just behind Banks Road School, where it is now, Middle Park. And I swear to God, there was like 200 kids there to watch me fight. I was Jesus. only seven. I had this, the loop was like massive. So anyway, a couple of the lads were with me. Like, Love yeah, a good yeah, kind of high school. Fight, look, <laughs> good story from a high school to God. And then, and then look, I got pushed in and like, I just didn't know what to do. I was like, and then he went, bang, he ate me, right? Cut me left and I seen the blood and that was it, game, game. Let's have it. I just went, bang, bang, bang. I was, honest to God, I absolutely pummeled him to bits in front of all these people. I absolutely pummeled him. I remember um, knocking him over, keeping him on, because I let him get up, right? And then when I let him get up, he he, he done it again. He cut, made me nosebleed. So I didn't let him get up again. I absolutely pummeled him. But after it, this is the way it should be. And it should have been all these people stabbing and stuff. and stuff. It shouldn't be like that. Look, we got up and we shook hands, right? Got up and shook hands. I absolutely battered him. Got up, we shook hands, went our separate ways. But from that day, all I got was respect out of everybody. As young as I was, from that day, I never had another bother in school. Never had another bother. And I was never a bully. And I was mm-hmm. never, I was never, I never threw my weight around or ever tried to bully anybody or I was always respectful. So, in a way, it's sort of like kids that get bullied, they need sometimes to, to show that they can defend themselves. Or mm-hmm. I'm not saying fighting's never the answer, it never is. But sometimes, unfortunately, with kids, they just, mm. that's the only way it works. Mm. You've got to defend yourself. And that that's was just the, very random. I apologise, but it just come into my head. I've just got this image of you walk, walking away from that fight with two girls, two girls in your arm at seven years old. I was the king of Banks Old School that day, honest to God. <laughs> I was the king. It was it was it was a great day. It was a great fight, and even That's now, like it's like about like you don't hear, like, obviously, but like just a good good old right straight after school. So I'm okay, <laughs> yeah. I get. Let's go on to the um, talking about like this knife crime and and um, I done a thing actually with Merseyside Police the other day um, to try and and the law. See, I do. I don't think the law is right. To be fair, right. My view, and this is only my view, and I have to say my view because obviously. Work purposes. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the law should be changed, and anybody even found with a knife should be sent to jail, mm. like for the minimum of five years. Minimum of five years, straight away should be. Honest thing, I don't. Also, uh, police the other day they show me what what they're getting off the streets, and a big thing what they're doing is not only are people having them on them because they know they can you know end up going to jail or whatever, but. The stashing them places around yeah. town, so yeah. then they know that if there's a fight, I've got one stashed in that tree or that bush or behind that wall, whatever like that. And they were showing me some of the things that they're getting off the streets, and it's fucking it's scary. Scary. My son's got to go to town to all this. Come into me, Auntie, the other day said, um, "Dad, Dad, I'm going to Ibiza in September." But no, you know, he went, "Dad, I'm 18. I am." <laughs> <laughs> I thought, no, my lad's a, a, a man, he's an adult, he's 18 in August, so I can't even stop him, do you know what I mean? But it's like it's frightening because he's going to be going and he's not going to have me there to look out for him or whatever, but he's sensible on that. But it's just no, with scary, what's going though, on in the streets and that, it is really scary. And, 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 and also, what I think as well with law, they should be able to stop check people the way they, they're like you're not allowed to touch me, blah, blah, blah. Anyone that gives any resistance like that towards the police, mm. if they're doing the job to, to, to obviously save lives and prevent this stuff happening, lock them up. Mm. If you don't want to play the game, lock them up. You're under 18, just take them away. Here's, here's one a good stat for anyone listening and any young people thinking about taking a knife out with them. The statistics say that you're more likely to either be hospitalised or in jail just by carrying a knife. So if you're carrying a knife to protect yourself or to think... This is a deterrent for anyone who wants to have a go. Do you know I'm carrying one? That's all the shit. If you're carrying a knife, statistically, you're more likely to be stabbed or to go to jail. Mm. So 
don't care if fucking because it's in your it's in your mind. It's like it's like in in the states, isn't it? It's like when you see the amount, you see road rage incidents in the UK, and because no one's got anything on them, it doesn't turn. But you can see how suddenly people in the US just suddenly because they know it's because they know it's, it's with there, them, yeah, because it's there. Then they just I just think if it, that, like they're the stats, if you go out carrying a knife, you are statistically more likely to get stabbed or go to jail. If that's not the biggest reason to not carry a knife. I don't know what is. And also, the, the you know, the these young lads on the scramblers around the streets and stuff. Like, someone lost his life due to, due to the day in Gast. And, you know, I don't wish that upon anybody. It's 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 bad anyone should lose life, but he shouldn't be doing stuff like that. Mm. These kids should need to be aware that, say, like, someone would have hit a kid. It happened a few years ago, didn't it? Killed the a kid child. The run. Do you know what I mean? And it's just... It, you got to be careful what you say because obviously it's a touchy subject. The poor yeah, yeah. kid's lost his life. Yeah. I wouldn't wish that on anyone. And you know, I feel for his parents and his family. But these kids need to stop trying to just be the big, the big bollocks and get out on the bike and show off in front of the mates because it has a knock-on effect. Someone you hate or injure, mm-hmm. or even if someone like the people who were driving who's, who's killed that kid, that's going to affect them, their families, mm. and they could not going to be able to live with that. That's going to eat away at them. Mm. Do you know, it's just got such a big effect for what for, for you being a dickhead and going out on a motorbike thinking you fucking evil can evil. Come on, get a grip. Mm. I mean, see again, but when I was a kid down the shore in Garston Shore, we used to be able to go on there on the motorbikes. Now the police come down and take them off you. You know, you're off road. You mm. should be able to do it. They should have something for the kids to go yeah, be able like to go it. on the bikes. Yeah, the big yeah. thing they were doing when I went to Mercy's Hard Police the other day, they were saying about just trying to get the almost education to be like not only about the knife, but then about saying saying there's other things to do and again there are so many other things that you can do do you know what i mean in the city now like you just need to be you just need to you just need to know of it yeah yeah like i don't know from things like fucking rock climbing or like mate there's loads of belted rock climbing centers yeah yeah, yeah. you can go down the albert dock you can get into like fucking triathlon you can start swimming in the albert dock i've done that fucking you want to keep fit and all that Go down to Crosby Marina. There's loads of water sports that take place down there. Yeah. You can go do the um, what's that thing where you, you stand on like two skis That's almost in, in, in the, the Albert Dock. Dock. Yeah. You can Brilliant. do that. The Marina. I didn't know any of that stuff when I was a kid. Yeah. So any of these kids, you go just fuck all to do. There is. You just, just got to just gotta make the effort and go and find it. Again, mm. no, but the, it's like we do a lot of stuff with the Prince's Trust with the fire. Excuse me, the fire service and. Um, the kids have got to commit to us and give us the name, the number, and all, and then we can help them. We can get them on apprenticeships. We can get them training. We can get them doing stuff. But again, they see the uniform and they just, they just. I don't, don't get that. Why do they even myself. see the uniform of firefighters though? Even though, yeah, they think you're busy. They think they see the the star and they automatically think you're the police. Or if you're not, you're working with the police. We do work with the police to help the community, mm. not to put people away or grasp people up. Or no, we're there as a as a a help and stop. We want to help them. Do you know, we can give we can give these kids so many things that would cost so me much opportunity. You. Yeah, yeah it would cost us thousands of pounds because we're adults. But for them, because they're underage, we we can actually give them apprenticeships, like um, skills. And, yeah, we, yeah, everything we can mm. give them. But they've got to commit to us. But they won't. I think at half the time as well, it's a, it's an image thing where yeah. if their mates see them doing that, then it's like hey, fuck, I'm not bad. And that's that's yeah. the thing. Yeah. It's, it comes back to what we spoke about before. That you know, show me your friends, I'll show you your future. If you surround yourself by nine idiots, don't be so surprised when you become the tenth one. And I think that gets a point in life. <laughs> True, that lad. Gets a point in life where you've got to look around and you've got to go. If I keep on hanging around with these. I want to keep on going out the weekends, getting off my head, getting pissed, you know, walking around with a knife, going up and down the street on scramblers. You know, you can't see a way out. There's got to be a point where you go, actually, you know what? Maybe if I just go down and see what that rock climbing place is about, or I'll go and see what that fireman's got to say and, and let him. It's mad that one about little about thing will change your life. Yeah. Change Speaking with Tony life. for five minutes about an apprenticeship, or what, what's that opportunity, or what gym did you used to go to? And then before you know it, your whole surroundings have changed, and straight away you're on a different trajectory then, aren't mm. you? Yeah, yeah. But I think like like we're going back to the YouTube thing. I think they all think it's all easy and mm. everything's gonna come to you on the plate when they haven't got the the thought process of having to work hard for something or having to make that effort to get something. Mm. They all think it's all gonna come to them, and it's. You well, know the hope I mean? is again when we start this podcast was to get people's stories out. And if anyone's gonna take anything from your story, any young lad, it's like yeah, Tony was an hard lad. You know, growing up, he went went through boxing and all that. He made a great career for himself. But then you can all the shit you've still had to deal with. It's fucking life's still hard, no matter if you're fucking hard <laughs> and you're a big fella who can look after himself. Life still fucking kicks you in the balls mm. and throws loads of shit at you. 
no matter fucking who you're at. Do, do you know what I mean? It's so like, I've probably been through the worst time a human could go through without me having something wrong with myself at the same time. And I got through it. You, you've got to. You got to. Like I said, you got to look for positives. Um, <sighs> tough times don't last. That's what people do. Yeah. To choose mm. it as cliche as it is, it's it's true. Yeah. No, but you're on that one. It is. It's two o'clock. I'm conscious that you. Uh, yeah, I need to bail that too. No well, problem, mate. Pick it's cool. Been, been a pleasure. <laughs> Again, I'll, I'll probably go away I'm, from here, right? And I'll, I'll there be loads more that I want to talk about. I'm buzzing that because I was just like, now, Susie, what are we going to talk about? I know everyone will want it and everyone uh, it'll be game. And then, look at that, nearly, fucking two hours nearly passed or whatever it is. So. <laughs> Great, lads. Much appreciated yeah, again, you, mate. Yeah. Pleasure, mate. Are you up for part three? F- right, yeah. <laughs> like I said, though, you know what? No, on, a, on a serious note, though, I think we need to get like a, um, either like a little, obviously just a pen and paper, sit down before we do it, try and go over some stuff, what we think will be. Start doing over the next couple of months. Then. I'm going to, do you know what? I've, Nick Pete, obviously, Nick Pete and me have been together. I was Nick Pete's first ever job. Do you know when the fight disciples, Nick mm, Pete? That yeah. was his first ever job as a as a journalist for the Maisie Mart. Really, yeah. Back in 1993, he was 16. He was on an apprenticeship. Wow. I was 12. Um, and <sighs> it's like he said to me that he said, "Look, would you be interested in writing a book?" I said, really? "I would." He said, "Well, when you drive, you've got one fella on YouTube who buy it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, quite a few people have said to me, you know, well, look, what do you think about doing?' And I was like, I would, I would, yeah, but I'd definitely lose my job. <laughs> 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 Fall out with a few people as well. No, to do be reckon, honest, look, do reckon, I don't. Do you reckon you? I don't think you would lose your job. No, money matters. That, listen, that, that's hypothetical. Yeah, yeah. I don't mean I'd, I've never done nothing bad enough yeah. to. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, I would. But Nick said to me, look, take a pen and paper." If you're sitting at the lights in your car, something comes into your head, write it down. He said, because that will help jog yeah, whatever yeah. whatever in the background was there. He said, you need to start doing that now over the next six months and then you'll come up with something and then we can sit down and talk about it. And before you know it, mate, you're going to have a big, thick book full that of stuff. That could be your New Year's stuff. resolution, mate. Start about, when, you, when are you 40? When do you turn? July 2nd. Oh, actually, same bit. Yeah, always Carl Flotch. Me and Carl, she really, had the same yeah. birthday, which is weird. That is weird. Get it, oh, yeah. Addictive phone would be good, yeah. Addictive phone's good, yeah. Get yeah, it. Just that, your... Make that the goal by that by your birthday. You've at least you've made a start on it with them. Yeah, I would. I, I, I definitely want to do one because because I'm. I think it's a great thing now that mine's out. It's a great thing I think to pass down. Yeah. You know, to your kids and your grandkids. Again, yeah, and, and, and if it helps anyone yeah. understand, because a lot totally, of these yeah. a lot of these people going through tough times, they don't understand it. I think. I think the, the people people think it's not normal. Like these kids really think that they're special, and all these bad things is just happening to them because it's just them. And then they take that on board and they think, think they've got the weight of the world on, on their shoulders. The, yeah, it just it it it, it develops and grows in them. Mm. You know the mm. anxiety and the the stress of it, and it just it hinders them as a person. And I think listening and reading and understanding that they're not alone and this is a normal thing and people do go through this helps them do you know mm. what I mean so oh, massively yeah it's boss I will the Dodson book <laughs> <laughs> thank you mate awesome